air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Pragyananda. Do you want to use my games to improve your chess? Now you can do. We have unpicked 50 puzzles from my games played in Champions Chess Tour this season. I went Bishop C5, D4 and Queen E4. Yeah, another crucial win for the qualifications to top eight. You can download it for free just by going to chess24.com slash puzzle pack. Enjoy solving. My name is Rafael Diaz and I have been passionate about chess since I was 14 years old. Chess taught me a lot of things when I was a teenager, like how to think strategically and how to make decisions based on logical reasoning. It also taught me to find the determination to pursue my goals, which later on helped me to obtain a PhD in physics. Chess has helped me so much that I always wanted to find a way to make more people interested and attracted to this wonderful game. My other passion, video games, led me to create my own game studio minimal games. We are now a team of eight people and we have been working for the past two years in our most ambitious project to date, Chessarama. Chessarama is a collection of chess inspired games, each with a different set of rules and themes like medieval fantasy, farming, samurai and even soccer. Our objective is to give players a modern gameplay experience using inspirations from chess tactics, strategies and culture to create original puzzle and turn-based games all in one package. The reason why I'm here today is to announce our partnership with Play Magnus Group founded by the five times world chess champion Magnus Carlsen and creator of the Champions Chess Tour, the world's most innovative sport event to emerge in the last few years. As part of this partnership, Chessarama will become an official sponsor of the Champions Chess Tour for the remainder of 2022 and for the whole season of 2023. We will also be an official partner of the next FIDE World World Championships broadcast on Chess24 channels. It is a big honor to have Play Magnus Group supporting Chessarama's mission of bringing even more people to the magical world of chess. I invite you to join us in this adventure by adding Chessarama on your Steam wishlist and by following along both the game and Play Magnus on social media. Hello everybody, I am Grandmaster David Anton Guijarro. I'm Magnus Carlsen. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top Grandmaster. I'm Grandmaster Nils Grandelius from Sweden. I am Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pendala from India.
Welcome everybody. My name is Yanni Pomnishi, former world chess champion. Are starting a new course here for chessable, a very special chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. Hi there. It's me. John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented aim chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not, that's because you're not using Aim Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com or VChess account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> now I know! Thanks, Aim Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good. Hi, it's me. That guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, thick, luscious hair, intuition builder, all this and more. Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth round fourth day of the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour's final, I mean, uh, 2022 season. So far, we have been seeing some stellar chess, but of course, yesterday's immortal. I mean, basically, Duda's checkmate against Anish Giri, it's probably the immortal of the 21st century, this checkmate, which, however, I mean, it did not come as a complete shock to me and to all of us, because who else has also announced it pretty quickly? with lightning speed, the one and only Rustam Kasimjanov. Welcome, Rustam. Hi, Peter. Hi, guys. Um, I was uh, truly a pleasure to be here yesterday uh, during this game, and I hope today will also not disappoint. I'm looking forward to some interesting chess. That's for sure. We are guaranteed. I mean, yesterday we had a short day. Yeah, it was uh, very much welcome, I think, by the audience as well, who start to watch it late night. But uh, we had so much action, brilliant chess, uh, crazy amount of uh, decisive games, and of course, this incredible check made by Jan Shishtov Duda. <clears throat> now, let's take a look at, first of all, the standings. Yeah, just to understand that what is really going on right now. Yeah, it's uh, Magnus Carlsen and Jan Shishtov Duda with nine, nine points. They both have been winning all their three matches. They are in fantastic form, by the way. There's a big catch. These two gentlemen will face each other in the valley. valley pardon me. I mean, I'm so excited about this announcement. And that the, in the very last round of the event, in the seventh day of uh, the finals. So it might be the, the decisive moment for the whole tournament. But we also have three players tied for third. Anish Giri, Liam Le and Pragnanda after bouncing back yesterday with a 3-0 win against Liam. We also see that Shakri Amamadjadov has started very well the tournament with a big win against Prague. However, lost the last two matches ever since. And Wesley caught up. Yesterday he won. He gained, gets the confidence. And we also have a matchup. Prague versus Wesley So. The, the two winners. What, what are your thoughts, Rustam? Um, I think it's very difficult to bet against Wesley who started to win. Um, so I would say, yeah, probably Wesley. But in a tough fight, who else do we have? Yeah, we have Anish Giri against Magnus Carlsen. Um, yeah, I would say Magnus. Wow, but you're also going to be tough. Yeah? Hang on, I, I always feel from your voice and uh, how you speak about Anish, you don't trust Anish to, to beat Magnus. Well, what's your take on this? Well, I mean, we have seen Anish uh, beating Magnus now and then. But basically, okay, normally Magnus is a favorite against anyone. And also, Anish, uh, didn't he lose yesterday in a quite a painful manner? I mean, I know we sort of immortalized this combination, but I don't think he was too pleased to be on the receiving side of it. That's for sure. Nobody is, yeah? I mean, getting into the history books, uh, everything by getting checkmated. By the way, also, there is a catch that uh, the, the biggest excitement from the audience, I believe, is uh, for best of the best game prize of the season. 
Shakri Amamadjalo versus Anish Giri. Yeah, that was also some kind of incredible mating attack by sacrifices from Shakriar from the aim chess uh, rapid event in, in, in October. And now Anish Giri also getting checkmated. Yeah, that what is this? That usually we would think that Anish is so super solid. How come that exactly he gets checkmated like this? I think maybe he loses so rarely that when he, when he does, yeah, it must be some brilliant checkmate. I think it used to happen to Topalov at some point that all his losses, they were getting some brilliancy prizes, but that's like 25 years ago or so. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, that, uh, okay, Anish has to now step up his game after yesterday's uh, disappointment. Yeah, it, it almost looked like a massacre at the end, but there was this interview with Anish and he mentioned that the key game being the first game that with Black, he equalized easily and then went pawn hunting in this endgame instead of just uh, shutting the game down. So it's always the first game. And Magnus has also said, what did he say yesterday in his interview? That, yeah, whenever I win game one against my opponent, then good luck for them in the rest of the match. <clears throat> so, yes, what Anish has to pay attention to, to keep the match as close as possible, to put Magnus under some kind of pressure, yeah? Because Magnus never likes if one game decides the fate of the match. Well, that's, I think Anish said this himself, yeah? With Magnus, you either get destroyed very quickly or you have a close match, yeah? So there is no third scenario, yeah? There is no way that you destroy Magnus quickly, yeah? That somehow doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah usually it does not happen, <laughs> yes. And we also have another match uh, between Liam Le and the leader, the co-leader, Jan Shishtov Duda. Uh, now, one, one big question, yeah? Because here, if we look at this match, uh, then we can think that, yeah, Liam got destroyed yesterday, 3-0 by Prague. Duda has beaten Anish with this beautiful mating attack and everything. So Duda is the clear favorite. However, I think we know exactly as professional chess players that when you deliver such an incredible checkmate like Duda has given, yeah, playing so-called game of his life, I mean, or checkmate of his life, you can also get overexcited. Yeah, I'm not sure how well did uh, Jan Shishtov Duda slap the night because this incredible adrenaline and the pleasure that he received from that game. Yeah, now we also know that uh, Le Quang Liam is, um, is a really, really strong player and especially dangerous in this format. So um, I don't know. I mean, just because Duda has had a good start doesn't make him a favorite. I think this is a very close match. I would take Liam if if you would ask me. Uh, I mean, okay, probably if uh, we, we say that it's 50-50, then you might take Liam, but... Uh... I mean, no, if 50-50, you still take Duda or you take Liam? Or I have to give you much bigger odds for Liam? What is your... No, I think I would take Liam on 50-50. Yeah? Ah, okay. okay. Because I don't I don't think anyone can win all the matches. Yeah, I mean, he already won three matches. Um, young Krzysztof, that is. And uh, maybe it's time to show some weakness. That's absolutely true. I mean, for example, personally, I always enjoyed playing against some players who started, you know, with an incredible score because I felt like, first of all, as you said, at some point, this uh, brilliancy run uh, has to end. At the same time, there is absolutely no pressure. Yeah. And if mm -hmm. I manage to stop them, then I'm going to be the hero. Yeah. It's, it also gives an extra energy, I think. And uh, let's not forget about our last and fourth match, uh, Shakri Mamed Yellow against Arjun Aligaishi. You have been talking about that. Yeah, you are really worried for Arjun at the moment. Is this the day when things might turn? Yeah, this is definitely the day. It's time to win some matches. Well, he plays against Shakri Aya, who is always very emotional. If everything goes well, then he's just super dangerous. But he also has these uh, off moments. Yeah, for example, like yesterday against Magnus, when he lost the balance, this first game was very critical. And after that, he, he never really... Uh, got a chance to come back. Yeah, I also go with you that this is the moment for Arjun that there is a chance for the big fight and he might turn the tables and then things might be easier for the rest of the, the rest of the tournament. Well, in general, we seem to agree on pretty much anything, right? Yeah, today. Maybe with the exception of uh, Wesley Pragnananda. I don't know. What's your, uh, what's your pick there? Well, I, I also agree with you. I mentioned uh, this yesterday that whenever Wesley starts to win, I think that uh, a monster is awakened and he is super dangerous and, and basically one of the very, very best in the world. Uh, on the other hand, Prague, after losing that match against Anish yeah, and that, that heartbreaking loss and then bouncing back with a 3-0 win, I believe he will get 
tons of confidence and he has been very successful throughout this tour and also in the major events yeah this is very interesting because usually i would think that uh, the the preliminary tournaments all these regulars uh, uh, favor the young players yeah because it's 15 games uh, much more dynamic and then in the in the matches the experience uh, should count on something but we already have lift off let's jump to Mamed Yellow Wagons Arjun Arigaishi, a Quincy to Nimso, and the Ragos in between Liam Le and Jan Shishtov Duda. Quincy to D5. All right, it's it's nice to see D5 because usually uh, I think uh, short castles E4, we have seen so many force uh, lines mm -hmm. and, and after D5, it's a completely different game. Yeah, I'm curious what Shahrira plays here. A knight of three is maybe a bit it's a bit boring, right? As opposed to some A3s and CD5s and so on. Wow. I mean, okay, basically it's like uh, against the Ragozin playing the move Queen C2. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not something that we are used to seeing, but okay. Anish Giri has also started against Magnus Kars and his game, and he goes for E4. Magnus calls for the French. Okay. An extremely it's... rare choice in, in Magnus's games, no? Yeah, he recently played it against Gukesh, I think, in uh, in the MCS event. And he also opted for this A6 line. It's probably the best line, uh, this A6, B5. But, I mean, French is a French defense. Yeah, I mean, I would be very happy with White. Yes. No, I remember that once he, he played this about 10 years ago in a tournament game in Waikanze. It was black. And he said that he played this because he lost the bet. And that was the first time he played the French. And, and just because of the bet, yeah? L L just because of the bet. Although one doesn't know how, how much trust you should put into this anecdote. Uh, French, of course, is, is a good opening. I have sold a lot of products related to the French defense quite successfully over my lifetime. Yeah, well, actually, I'm also planning to, to write something from the white side, yeah, how to destroy the French, yeah, so I'm I'm also looking forward to some, some business relation with the French, because personally, throughout my career, I very much enjoyed playing against the French, so I feel like I have the spirit, yeah, that how to fight it, yeah, it's not just some move pen, move theoretical stuff, but much more why I believe, yeah, that this is always so nice for white if you play precisely, yeah, it's, uh, of course, if you just make that's why French defense is kind of a good opening that against weaker players, you can win a lot of games with black. But I think that whenever white plays beautifully and very precisely, then black should suffer. Well, that is true, yeah. I mean, to be to be fair, in my la latest product, I um, advocated this line with queen b6, queen takes b2. In which case, there is no suffering, yeah? There is just a huge theoretical debate. Yeah, very forced lines and everything. Mm -hmm. This... Uh, a6, b5, and then queen d2, a3, queen a5 reminds me of some old classics. No, it was debated like some 15 years ago. Yeah, this is a funny position where um, I, I noticed at some point that in this position, all white rook moves uh, are sensible. Like rook a2 is sensible, rook b1, rook c1, rook d1, all of them are interesting theoretical moves, which is a rare case, right? Doesn't usually happen like this. Yes, I, I believe that rook a2 used to be the main move back then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, rook a2, I think, is one of the moves. And I also think you're right in, uh, in as far as if you analyze this position well and for a long time, then black will suffer. But uh, um, but then Magnus, he, he knows that Anish probably hasn't seen this position in a while. Uh, bishop and and Anish goes bishop e2, yeah. Yeah, this I thought allows some, some kind of liquidation, but... Um, or maybe maybe b4, knight d1, c4. Maybe it's actually a sharper try for white. Aha, uh -huh, like, but hang on. W wasn't it that white was going bishop d3 and then somehow provoking b4, c4 and then retreating and then black was going for, or oh, that was with pawn on a2. Yeah, pawn with pawn on a2. Yeah, with pawn on a2, I think it's different. Yeah, there, there is this line where white goes bishop d3, I think instead of a3. Yeah, something like this. Yeah, and then the black starts to to push the pawns mm -hmm. here. Yeah, yeah that's it's a very rich position with a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's completely different. All right, so interesting. There definitely Magnus 
wanted to surprise Anish. Yeah, first of all, you also never know exactly what Anish will choose for move one. Yeah, that he opted for e4 wasn't uh, given, and probably Magnus felt like, okay, if it's e4, I'm gonna go for the French defense because this is Magnus's incredible uh, strengths. Yeah, that he actually knows all the openings, and it's not like he knows them all move per move, but he understands the spirit behind all of this. Yeah, and that's why he also believes that he can handle any situation. But also, uh, we, we noticed this a uh, long time ago, also when doing commentary with Gusti, that Magnus, in a first black game, he likes to play something that he doesn't play usually. I think the, the idea is that if it works out, then um, there will be this slight uh, shock effect for the opponent. And if it doesn't work out, then he has time to come back so this is um, maybe on the whole just good mathematics. Yeah, that that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we will see this B4 knight D1 uh, being played, and now the question: How Black will release the tension, or will he keep the tension? I mean, okay, I'm not sure. You can keep it forever. I thought B A might also be possible. Mm -hmm. Just take. So you want to get ready for the queen trade? Okay, if we take over with the rook on ac, then we will uh, lose material after queen d2 cd. Yeah, the mm -hmm. rook will be hanging. So probably we have to take them on a5 first. Knight takes. And now the big question. Yeah, rook takes ac, runs into cd again. So does Anish want to play b3 here or what? I'm Maybe slightly just... confused. Or Maybe just b takes a3. I mean... But I, I know you're not supposed to play like this in your in your book on how to beat the French. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. This is how not to beat. Yeah, this, this is what you shouldn't be doing. But hang on. Then after B takes AC, there should be a... I, I don't believe in this. So after B, A, C, what is Anish up to? Well, I don't think C3 works well, right? Because Black maybe can take A, B, exactly. B1, Queen. Exactly. This is also an option because we are queening the B pawn. No, I'm, I'm puzzled. Yeah, chat, chat or anyone, can you help us out? What is going on? Is this theory? Uh, I, I don't somehow, I, I don't recall AC and Bishop E2 together. And Magnus just goes Luke B8, ignores all of this. Slightly surprising. And short castle blitzed out. Yeah, the chat is talking about about Karo Khan. <laughs> about Karo Khan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they are not impressed, yeah, by the French defense. Yeah, Rook B8 castles. Okay, Tarias mentions that this is still somehow book. Of course, yeah, everything is possible, but I still somehow find it hard to understand what it wasn't. Ah, Yuanji ding them from. Ah, 2012, exactly. I thought like it's it's from 10 years ago. It's uh, it, it can't be. You know, when I first heard it, I thought that maybe 2022. So Ding already started hiding his preparation. Yeah, he's fooling around with some uh, some French defense. Wow. Okay, let's make a tour. Let's make a quick tour because we see the co-leader Jan Shishtov Duda playing uh, Ragozin. I don't recall how many Ragozins he have played with black, but this also explains why he was so much into details maybe yesterday against Anish. But also you you, you saw this, right? Turned out that this, sac that this peace sacrifice yesterday, he has already played this before. Exactly, and against Yu Yanji. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was interesting. But a but couple of years back, yeah, that's why I think Anish didn't have it on his rad radar. Yeah, so Queen A4 check, Knight C6 easily, short castle, Queen C2. This is one of the most fashionable lines to fight against the Ragozin. Black has tons of moves, uh, but Jan Shishtov went for D takes C4. It was supposed to be that this is not the most precise because one argues always that if white plays Bishop D2, then black takes, and then black goes back Bishop D6, and now uh, white has committed Bishop D2, and anyway, he will need to retreat with the Queen to C2. So I'm a little bit surprised that we see uh, Duda take on c4 immediately. Takes bishop d6, castles e5, h3, yeah, covering the g4 square, plus the, the, this is very important, very useful move. a6, a3, yeah, both sides like to 
keep the squares under control. Bishop d7, d takes e5, takes, takes, takes. Bishop d2, queen e7, f4 on the board. What is your take? I mean, in some positions, bishop takes e3 was, an, was a possibility, but I think it's a little bit too late. Now white can sacrifice the pawn or not after bishop takes e3. It's, it's often bishop takes e3, queen e3 check, and then moving away with the king, and it's supposed to be very dangerous compensation. Yes, on the board. Bishop takes mm -hmm. e3, bishop takes e3. So I'm expecting the black not to capture the pawn. It's a free pawn. Huh? Well, yeah, but uh, I mean, after queen is the king h2, try to make a move. Um, I'll just give me a sec. Um, I can give you as many seconds as you need. Uh, you just think it's bad, right? Well, I mean, I think that this is even a better version for white than that that could happen. Wasn't it uh, the first game, Conel against... Uh, against Hui Fan in uh, their World Championship match, but it was like uh, some 10 years ago. However, it's it's, it's still I, common knowledge. Queen C5? No, Queen C5, then Bishop F6, then Bishop B... No, Bishop F7. Bishop E6, yeah? This was my idea. Uh-huh. So like... Ah, but Bishop B4 is a problem also, yeah? Ah, that is true, yeah. Bishop B4 is maybe... Yeah, because problem. your trick was Bishop F6, yeah. Bishop E6, yeah? Yes. And if I start with bishop e6? After king h2, bishop e6. Okay. Probably I'm going to go rook a1. There were also some rook f3s. I, I don't know. Okay. We, we shouldn't be getting too deeply into because actually Duda has played the move bishop b5, mm -hmm. which is a very professional move. I think this is the move how you try to liquidate. This makes a lot of sense. And bishop b5 looks nice because after bishop takes b5, maybe black... I think he'll probably just take ab, yeah? Why not? I thought maybe he can include queen takes e3, but that too seems unnecessary. Yeah, and we are getting the info by Tadeas that, yes, uh, the position with bishop on c8 and pawn on h2 would have been the, the famous Konaru Huifan game from 2011. Mm -hmm. But yes, thanks to bishop d7, now uh, black has this bishop b5 option, which is a nice liquidating possibility. Okay, black has solved his problems. That's it. Well, I mean, white will take a pawn on b5, on c7, on b7, but okay, that's not serious, right? Yeah, with a pawn on the, with, with this weakness on. If pawn would be on f2, it would be, I mean, we could claim that white can try to torture something, but uh, with this structure, I don't believe. Yeah, white goes e4, but okay, now black is just perfectly fine. So, in fact, Duda had his plan. He understood exactly that this is a nice little difference, that the bishop is already on d7 and against f4. So maybe then it turns out that the exciting f4 wasn't the best way for white, because this just equalized too easily. Okay, let's go to Pragnanda against Wesley So I'm seeing some very sharp position. It did happen again from this East Nimso with East Bishop D2. Very sharp, complex line. Yeah, Bishop D3, Rook E8, Castles, Bishop D6. Trying to be flexible. Knight B5, hitting the Bishop. Bishop E7, Knight E5. C5. So many uh, subtle uh, finesses. Yeah, Black was not committing his Bishop yet to B7, but at the end of the day, it landed there as anyway. Bishop e1, the typical way of getting the bishop to h4. Knight c6, bishop h4, knight e4. And takes, takes, queen b3 on the board. Wow, what yeah. is this? I noticed that queen b3 was possible in order to, to hit the bishop on b7 after knight e5, f takes e5. Well, I wasn't even sure yeah, that uh, how white has many options. Even you can take on e7 and then take on e5 with d takes so f. Um, yeah, bishop e7 is probably, in fact, stronger. Yeah. Because otherwise there is some bishop d5. Yeah, bishop but, d5. Uh, but who cares, yeah? Bishop you, you, e7. Exactly. Um, okay, let's just show your point. Yeah, bishop h4, queen f7, check. And then the bishop falls. 
Yes, yeah, so takes, takes. And your line was bishop d5, and then you just take. Yeah, and then the knight will end on d6 later, right? Exactly, you move the queen somewhere. Yeah, queen c3 or so. And then so the knight lands, yeah. Black probably should not let this happen. Mm -hmm. But then what do we do? To play probably rook f8. Yeah. Much to his dismay. Yeah, probably he has to. I mean, it's a kind of sad move, but on the other hand, it's very important to keep the structure, not to let white's uh, slightly offbeat knight uh, get into the game perfectly. Yeah, if if you have a trade on e5, then pawn one of the pawns will cover this dc square and so on. So rook f8 is the suggestion. We we think it might be the move. There are a lot of tactics, right? Uh, yeah. Bishop e7, queen e7. I can try d5, knight e5, d6. Try to queen the pawn quickly. Mm -hmm. Trying to be super aggressive, yeah? Yeah, but then, okay, knight e5, d6, you probably give knight f3 check, yeah? And uh, and then we will open up the bishop, yeah? Yeah, and then, okay, rook f3 will lose time, and gf will lose my king, I'm I'm afraid. Yeah, so just... yeah, yeah. <laughs> rook f3, we probably go to d7, and then bishop c6, yeah? And... The pawn on d6 will be vulnerable. Yes, yeah. Queen d7, rook g3 is probably uh, an empty gesture. Yeah? I'm not creating threats there. At least we hope that the knight is still far away. Yeah, but also knight c7 now, followed by rook d1, where it is probably... Exactly. I mean, it's at well, least yes. tricky. Yeah, it's tricky. But okay, it does feel like black, black should be fine after rook f8. I mean, I'm not really worried of all these complications because... I think black has quite some reserves. Well, you can try to take the pawn, yeah? for instance, in the line that we had. After d6, yeah? After d5, knight e5, d6, just play queen f6, for instance. Yeah. Takes, takes, and... Um, and I probably don't have anything great here, no? Yeah, well, I mean, you have some compensation, but uh, doesn't feel like... It should be because we have bishop d5 in the pocket. Yeah, so, like uh, I thought maybe rook d1. but Yeah, you, you have to play rook d1. Play bishop c6, so the rook d8, yeah. Yeah, I mean, any of this, maybe even rook d8 first. Yeah, and then d7, bishop c6, and you start attacking this pawn. Yeah, yeah, no, this... But of course, I understand uh, vastly that he takes uh, his time because going back with the rook to f8 isn't so easy, but he has to calculate all these 95s and... I don't think that he will like what he sees. So rook f8 is an admission of guilt, yeah? Somehow, uh, you know, something went really wrong. Well, but on the other hand, the white has given up the light square bishop, yeah? So something for something. And it's very important that you keep the status quo, yeah? That you haven't decided the fate of these pieces. Basically, if you take on e7, then also the black queen very nicely develops uh, to e7. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, at the moment it looks passive, but if we see that the, the queen lands on e7 with a tempo, then, and wow, Vesti goes for 95, so he calculated and discovered something. So fe5. Well, first of all, after bishop takes e7 in this position, as you mentioned, um, black has knight f3 check. Yeah. Again. Yes, well, yeah. So you don't get this f takes e5 or d takes e5 for free. Yeah, I mean, knight f3 was a very important motive. All the more, it's important that what happens after f5. Yeah, f5, bishop d5 is what Tadej wrote us. Yeah, yeah, bishop d5. This is what we had, and after uh, bishop queen takes d. c7, I mean, queen chat, d. chat, don't don't reveal the big point. Can anyone find? What the computers are basically claiming here. Oh, well, the chat, chat, chat will easily find this. Yeah, and fe5 on the board. Bishop d5 blitzed out, and we will be seeing it. So, guys, hurry up, hurry up. What is Wesley up to after bishop e7? Will he find the super move? Let's let's wait. Well, if, if he has really spotted it before and uh, definitely he has the otherwise he would have not taken an e5, that means that Wesley is very sharp. 
yeah, it's also a bit unfair because I think White's positional uh, point was quite convincing. Uh, should not should not have failed to some unusual tactics. And do we have do we have the answer in our chat? I think the chat basically just lost interest at some point. Ah, uh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Then, then, okay, we have to reveal, yeah, because it's a stunning move. Yet Black is, in fact, not recapturing the bishop because then White would get what he wants. But Black goes queen, d8 to d7, ignoring the bishop for the moment, but hits the queen on b3 and also hits the knight on b5. And apparently, Black is perfectly fine. What a stunning resource, this queen d7. But it's not yet played on the board. On the board, vastly super sharp. Yeah, it is unfortunate that White just doesn't, White just doesn't have any tactics. Yeah, yeah. Like anything would work, but, but there is nothing. Yeah. You yeah see, it's okay. It's we have to move the queen. Yeah, we don't have any other choice. Well, you have e6, but it's not working. Yeah. So. Yeah, doesn't seem to help. Yeah, the cause. And for example, if we just move the queen to a3, then. You, oh, you take the take... knight, yes? Yeah, you take the knight. And actually, it looks very nice for black with this bishop on d5. Yeah, no, white should be uh, careful because now the bishop is offside. Yeah, that's the... the... Like like yesterday, Arjun's bishop is on the wrong part of the chain. Yeah? On the wrong side of it. Exactly. Yeah, wow, I mean, okay. Brilliant reaction by Wesley. Just, I mean, let's let's go back and appreciate it one more time. So Black has taken D takes E4 and Prague came up with a very interesting move, Queen B3, putting pressure on F7. We somehow intuitively felt that this Knight takes E5, F5 is just too risky. And uh, that's why we considered that maybe when Black has to play the move Rook F8, Wesley disagreed and find the computer resource with Knight takes E5, F E Bishop D5. Bishop takes d7, queen d7. Wow. All right. This is also the moment to move on. Uh, probably, yeah. First of all, just very quickly to, to say that this uh, Shakra Mamadjad of Arjun Ariga is a typical Nimzo structure. Yeah, it's a disbalanced position, but not that exciting that we, we can't stay on this right now because we have to go back to the Magnus's game. And here we have seen this typical f4, f5 pawn sacrifice. The position is blocked. What is your first uh, intuition telling you here, Rustam? My first impression that the knight on d1 is too far away. It from the f4 be... square. From f4, yeah, exactly. It takes uh, one, two, three moves to get there. And I think that's, uh, that's maybe too many moves. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Black might even be threatening the pawn on a4. I know knight takes a4 is always clumsy, but knight a4, queen b5, and suddenly Black will have a lot of passed pawns, potentially. And also putting pressure on b to c3 pawns, yeah? Well, especially since I assume that white at some point will need to move this knight. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, now we have to very quickly use the moment to get back what happened so castles magnus opted for c5 so he magnus went for very uncompromising fight a4 anish blocks the position bishop e7 queen e1 yeah it's a typical maneuver of transferring the queen to the king side b3 c3 knight b6 wow magnus really believes that he can just uh, collect this pawn on a4 yeah probably also with bishop d7 and as Rusta mentioned, knight a4 followed by queen b5, so it's not an eternal pin. Um, contrary to some uh, Vinavar positions where this pin is uh, uh, eternal. And uh, Anish felt like he's under some pressure and he immediately opted for counterplay with f5. EF5, queen g3. Typical sacrifice, g6, bishop g5. Bishop e6. And now Anish opted for another interesting move, bishop f6. Yeah, my first feeling was that he's going to lose this f6 pawn, yeah? Like yeah. takes, takes, and then maybe knight d7? On the board played, yeah. Bishop takes f6, ef. I mean, Magnus also has captured on f6 instantly. Knight yeah. d7 played, yeah. So now black forgets about the a4 pawn. Now he has a chance to grab the f6 pawn and eventually land the knight on e4, which could just... Uh 
give him so much stability and uh, so much safety for his king, basically winning the game. So why should never let that happen? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, White probably also got a bad version of this gambit since his pawn on a4 took two moves to get there, right? First he played a3, then he played a4. He probably lost some time on this. Yeah, knight d7. How do we react? I mean, okay, we have to for... Um, yeah, Anish goes knight g5, of course, but... Where is the... So the point is, after knight takes f6, he will take and play queen d6, right? Yeah, that, that would work, yeah, but... I mean, this. I'm not even hundred percent sure that this would work. Even this, yeah, would not work. For so. instance, king f7. Uh huh. Trying to trap the queen, yeah. Queen c6. I mean, your queen is like half dead, yeah. If... Yes. But not yet dead. That's that's true. Half dead, yeah. So the you rook, go rook hd8 or rook hd8, yes. Yeah. Trying not to. And if I go queen c5, then you will have three pass pawns in the center. I can't do that. I yeah, yeah. I can't you can try to it. go like bishop c4 and try to. Um, yeah, but hang out, on, but... Magnus actually goes rook c8. He's trying to cover the knight and prepare the queen c7 retreat. We see computer does not approve this. This is apparently slow if Anish is able to find the right direction. Black wants queen c7. Well, normally it takes on e6, right? Okay, it takes, takes. Queen d6. Queen d6. And then does Magnus want to go knight f8? Well, I think it's the only move. Only move, yeah. Knight f8 only move. And now... um, I mean, this, this king is, is suspiciously exposed. Yeah, but uh, luckily the, this queen is alone. You know, behind enemies. Well, I have moves. Yeah, I have rook takes f5, but doesn't quite seem to work yet. Yes, because the, the knight is in the way. Yeah, so I can yeah, yeah, because just... you go ef. Yeah, and I yeah. have problems bringing the rook in quickly. Yeah, I mean, imagine the rook could jump now to e1, but it's not. Yeah, uh, you that's cannot you cannot that. have an immortal combination every day, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's fair. All right. Okay, By the way, what... also both players under some time pressure yeah because it's such a complicated position and only five and a half minutes more or less for the players how do you react wow okay we are getting some suggestions from uh, tadeas yeah how computers would uh, treat the position i'm very curious if anish will find the computer directions because Human lead feels that you, you want to do something direct, yeah, because black is pawn up, uh, pawn on f6 is vulnerable, black is threatening queen c7, and uh, th that's why we're also in in for this knight takes e6, f6, queen d6 direction. But computer says apparently that just queen e3 putting the pressure on the e6 bishop, forcing black to go passive with knight d8, for example, and then with g4 breaking up black's construction. It's uh, Super impressive, but I'm not sure that it's easy to find over the board. No, it's not easy to find. But also, does this mean that uh, the peace sacrifice was better than rook c8 for black? Could easily be, yeah. I mean, computer mm -hmm. did not like rook c8 so much. But I mean, it's, it's a practical game and Anish done to four minutes. If he does not find queen e3, then actually rook c8 might be a very strong move. But on the other hand, uh, why doesn't really have a lot of choice? Yeah, queen d6... Queen c7 is probably over. Yes. So if uh, knight e6 doesn't work, then maybe he will have to find the correct move just by the process of elimination. Yes, exactly. But I mean, usually in classical chess, it's easy to use this method in uh, rapid chess, and especially it's already in our blitz time control with, uh, with five minutes now, already only three and a half. I mean, it would be super impressive if we see Anish suddenly playing Queen E3 G4. Yeah, G4 feels a bit vague. Yeah, feels a bit non-threatening. Yeah, and, and look at Anish so in focus. He might find it. He's so concentrated. Come on, Anish, you can do it. It's the first game against Magnus. First game is so important. 
you have to show your best. Magnus kind of enjoying his music, his playlist. I, I never know how the players are doing this. Do they listen to something or they just want to cancel out some noise? I think they probably listen to some music. The question is what? Yeah, I mean, for Magnus, we know that he, he likes to listen. Yeah, the, usually when in the opening, I a couple of times fell for this cheapo. Yeah, that I said, ah, oh, Magnus is making up his mind uh, which uh, line to choose. And in fact, he's selecting some playlist. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. He goes for Knight XT6. Of course, this is the human way. It's the most natural way. But this is exactly what Magnus was hoping for. Yeah, Magnus usually Abba. Yeah, I, I'm very much in love with his choice. But I'm not liking Ganishis. Yeah, basically after Knight F8, we didn't know how to continue on the board. Yeah, Knight F8, um, I was struggling, yeah, yeah because I, I need to sacrifice something fast, but it doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, look at Anishi's pose. Yeah, it's clear that he's looking at Rook F5. I mean, Queen C7 is coming, then we can't sacrifice anything anymore. So Rook F5, EF, and here we didn't know how to follow it up. Bishop F3, Queen C7, F7 check, but doesn't well, you, look... You... You could play like MVL style, yeah? Bishop F3, Queen C7, Queen takes D5 and fight, you know? Just like this, yeah? Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be easy for Black in a rapid game, but it's probably not going to work. Yeah, probably not. But as you say, maybe I have Queen D8. And then Queen takes C4. Queen takes F6. And knight e3 or something, yeah. Oh, knight f2. I mean, it's a fight, no? Yeah, yeah, it's a fight. I mean, okay, I want to cement with knight e7, but I still can't castle, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's uh, far from safety. All right. Basically, Anish is probably forced to go for such adventures. Well, he he does go for sacrifice, but I'm not liking this bishop takes c4 because. It felt like his light squared bishop could be potentially the, the most dangerous piece. By the way, what is this? I mean, DC, okay, just knight is no, this is nothing. This is empty. I don't mm -hmm. buy this. How does black play it best? Well, I even have a couple of options. Yeah, I mean, queen c7, king f7, I, I even don't know which to choose. Uh, queen c7, knight takes c4, yeah? This is sort of the Yes, point. but I mean, I, I'm not a believer in this as well. But I mean, okay, if I want, I can even just go king f7, probably. Knight c4? And then queen d5. Oh, queen d5 blunders a rook, right? Ah, then, it, then it's good, yeah. I mean, that's why I have to... Okay, then I have to play my... Okay, queen c7, yeah. And you can also play queen d8, yeah? Queen d8, know. yeah, that's also possible. That's also true. Queen d8, and if knight c4, maybe play some like rook c7, yeah, and then claim cement. Well, in general, I just don't believe in this knight c4, yeah? It's uh, so little, yeah? You, you can also maybe just ignore with king f7. I mean, I'm not setting anything. The same applies with queen on c7. I was also not forced to blunder anything. Yeah, but if you play, let's say, rook c7, then finally you have a threat. Then I have a threat, yeah, and then... And then white plays something like knight somewhere, knight... No, not knight, queen somewhere, queen... Yeah, queen somewhere, I mean, queen, queen c5, c5. Or queen a3. Yeah. Um, or maybe queen g3. I mean, it looks a bit messy to me. Yeah? It, looks, it like... looks a bit, but I, I don't believe. Okay, let's even get back to the starting position. Magnus is thinking, I mean, look look at Magnus's pose. I mean, he understands it's, uh, you need to take it seriously, yeah? But uh, it shouldn't work, yeah? Queen c7 played. Knight takes c4. I mean, just nothing is threatening. Well, d5, I don't know. There is some potential. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, but, but I mean, that there should be some good way for black, that's for sure. Uh, hang on, can we move this knight? Can I play knight d8? But I'm still not threatening anything, yeah? It's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can maybe just put the rook to e1 or something, yeah? Yeah, rook e1, knight Yeah, very funny. Okay, just, just to highlight that, yeah, suddenly queen takes c4, queen e7 would be checkmate. Yeah, Magnus goes king f7. Yeah, that, that was a very solid way. Yeah, just evacuate the king. 
Well, I think he also wants to take on f6 sometimes. Yeah. Maybe if d5, for instance, he will take like ed, queen d5, and just king takes f6. Yeah, probably is, uh, is some sort of a plan, at least. And then some knight d6. Knight d6, rook. Oh, there is some rook takes f5, yeah? To be yeah, taken. but still, you, you can maybe just walk away, king g7 and knight g6. Just to show, but one really feels that Anish is so angry after yesterday. He also wants to get into to the, the glory books or something, yeah. But it's a lot of stuff to calculate for black, yeah. And yes, yeah, five, definitely. But... Yeah, d5 on the board. All right, we're gonna see some far. No, Magnus spoils the fun, yeah. Knight d8, professional. He's still not setting to take on c4, though, and he's still not threatening to take on d6. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but he wants to take on f6, as you said, yeah? This Maybe just a... king f6 next is the big threat. I mean, if white had time to go g5 now, yeah? This would be some sort of a funny tuk twang, but... Ah, black is threatening queen a7 check, potentially. Ah, uh, yes. So there then... is some... Yeah. Uh, some amount of nuisance that he can cause. No, there is there is a lot of fun in the position, but it seems like it does not work. And uh, and after takes and check, he has to go king g8, right? And this he had to foresee because king f6 loses the rook. Yeah? Queen c7, rook c7, knight d6 check. Pardon me, which which one to take? Now queen c7. Ah, queen c7. Forces rook c7, knight d6, and only move king g8, yeah? Yes. Because but I mean, guess... okay, then we trade it. If you don't lose, then we win. Yeah, but he must have seen this. Yeah? Yes. Because otherwise, what he did would be just a blunder. Yes, yes, definitely. Wow, okay. Very nice, precise calculation by Magnus Anish done to 10 seconds, basically. And it's a lot of time. Yeah, 4, 3, 2. He, he, you need to move, Anish. Yeah, he uh -huh. plays D6. <laughs> but how on earth do they do this? Yeah, that... They play without any seconds. Yeah, already the, the clock ticked down. He jumped back on ten seconds. Yeah, I, I, I was I was sure that he was going to lose on time because he found no move. But this is uh, equivalent, right? Knight D takes E six and yeah, uh... black is coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I mean that was the point. He knew that the the game is lost, so he has nothing to lose. Otherwise, he would have played much faster. And Magnus taking his time. This is also very nice that he, he knows for sure that he's winning, but there is just no reason to rush. Well, I think knight fe6 allows some knight e5 check and then knight d7 check. I don't see a reason to allow this. Yes, yeah, I'm knight d8 to e6 looks so much more natural. Ah, but then knight d6, then you still have to reckon with queen takes c7, rook c7, and then knight d6 check. Yeah, and then okay, ah, and then king g f7, and then go for this two rook business. Yeah, yes, I mean, two pieces versus the rook. Ah, Just so this to game highlight is not, this, it's not yet quite over, right? Yeah, well, then may, basically, we maybe better just to take immediately on f6. But eventually, you have rook ac taking the pawn, yeah, just to highlight. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not a clean solution for blind, not at all. Easy. So then, in fact, Magnus wants to take knight d8 to e6, but maybe he shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and he goes for knight f8 takes e6. Knight e5 check, king f6. And now knight e7, king f7. Yeah, not to allow queen e7 check. Knight e5, king e8, and the white run out of checks. and Or king g7 as well, yeah? Mm -hmm. You can already walk away, yeah. Now queen d5 played. Anish is being tricky, right? He's not... Yeah, Anish is uh, fighting like crazy, but... Uh... Unfortunately, I believe that against Magnus, it won't be enough. Yeah, maybe king e7, yeah, just to get out of checks. Rook e8. Rook e8. Yeah, uh, it I, would, it would be my choice as well. I was hesitant about allowing rook takes f5. I just wanted to get out of checks, man. Mm. But I mean, okay, rook f5, somehow you, you don't have pieces anymore, yeah? Well, take queen f5, king g7, yeah? Yes. I think it depends on how much you saw, yeah? Because... So it's very close, but king g7, and I run out of checks. I mean, I even saw that king g8, knight f6 check, king h8, knight e8, queen c5 also look good enough, but yeah, so 
I, I don't believe in this. And the, the trick is that we also see the evolution by yeah, that computer says it's completely lost. It's hard to uh, hard to, to think otherwise. Yeah, Anish breaks with G4. Suddenly Anish is like on 25 seconds. Yeah, but we still but we it, still remember how he had zero seconds. <laughs> zero seconds, exactly. He played with zero seconds. And okay, he is he's trying. That definitely is trying, but it shouldn't be enough. I mean, Queen C4 runs into Queen E5 check. Yeah, Magnus just goes F5, F4, closing down everything. The king is safe. Light. And okay, a4, a5 signals that white is also running out of ideas. A5 is a funny move, yeah. Yeah, it it show it's a truly classy move, but uh, unfortunately, it's not a strategical battle. Knight f7. Look f1, and okay, now Magnus's knight start jumping. I just rook d8, yeah, rook takes e6, rook d7, like total annihilation of pieces. Yeah, very precise. And wins the game. Wow, basically, okay, but this is good news for Magnus, uh, not the best news for us. H4, F3, because as Magnus said, if I'm winning first game, then good luck to my opponents. Yeah, it looks game over. It is, yeah. The French. Yeah. I that's told it. You. Good opening. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you know it, when to use it. Yeah, that's the secret. Mm -hmm. You you shouldn't be no only playing the the French. Yeah, just hit hit with it at the right time. Wow. And what about uh, Liam? It's a draw. Yeah, very tricky pawn end game, but. Yeah, I was trying to 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 calculate it with. Uh, uh... Yeah, just in time. King g3, and yeah, takes um, takes h4, and then go back to e1 in time. Yeah, yeah and we see Duda is quite disappointed because Tadea is informing us that actually, in fact, uh, Duda was winning earlier on. And this typical way of getting to f1. This is the key defense. Threatening king g1, and after king h2, we just close the king out. And we know that this is a dead draw, so... Wow, actually, Liam then escapes. Psychologically super important. Mama in some trouble. I mean, okay, it could be draw. I mean, this look and game is always very tricky, but clearly Arjun is putting, uh, I mean, still putting pressure. And uh, what about ah, Prague against Wesley and the door, right? Then, then we can focus on this position. Basically, this this king doesn't get out, right? Yeah, I mean, if it would get out, it's it's a win. So the big question: Will White ever, for example? No, but there is no Tsukswang issue, yeah. No Tsukswang issue. I wanted to highlight that maybe after H four H five it's Tsukswang, but in fact, White can also just play King H three, King G three, and whenever Black plays E five, there is a check. Yeah, this is the big problem. Yeah, probably after h4, yeah, black will play king g6, king h5, but uh, will not make meaningful progress after that, right? Yeah, king g6, king h5, and then eventually you have to abandon the a2 pawn and then try to collect this h, but even this, but this will not even work. Yeah, no, it's not going to work. Yeah. You cannot even get that pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or even if you get, then your look on h4 will be trapped. Yeah, you might run into, you might lose the game. Yeah, better yeah, no, than I was. Then. I was wondering if if black can get out of with the rook, maybe with e5, but that's not. Uh, I mean, not the way to play for a win. Yes, it's not a winning but a losing attempt. Yeah, do the game has ended in a stalemate. Yeah, the the famous stalemate with the h pawn. So our only game is Shakriya versus Arjun. King g6 played. King h3. Yeah, white just waits. I mean, really, if not no, not for the logged out black king, black would actually easily win with the a2 pawn. Yeah, this, this king is thoroughly locked out. Yeah, I, I even don't really see ideas, yeah, that how to torture.
Yeah, that's the point. Now that the king moved, now white can afford to move the rook, yeah, because the, the king can't get to the seventh rank. But he could also go king h3, right? Or was there something wrong with that? It looked like he, he could, but uh, if if not necessary, he probably doesn't want to move the king. I guess okay, g3 is such a nice square, right? And... Yeah, very nice, protecting all the pawns. Some, I mean, from the picture that we're seeing now, something tells me that Shahriar was probably losing before at some point. Are you think that he's so happy that he survives? Or... Yeah, yeah, he looks like uh, I should have never survived this. He had this kind of face, if I, if I saw his face correctly. Yeah, it's uh, Tadeas confirms that yes, he was. And King G6 to K7 immediately, yeah, because otherwise, uh, if you are not careful, you give Black the chance mm -hmm. to go King F7, the game is lost, then there is no way to Black can afford to get to the 8th rank and then walks all the way up to the Queen side and then starts to go up. So, yes, Rook A7, the key move. King F6. Now, maybe we will even see the move H5. Completely stalemating Black's King. But Shakira doesn't want to be provoked. Yeah, he feels like, okay, I have everything under control. Yeah, he already has a setup that works here. Yeah? Why, why try new setups? Yeah, h5 played, king g3. I mean, it's one of those look and games that usually you can torture forever, but here black even doesn't have a chance to to, to pose any problems. Yeah, he doesn't have a single idea. Yeah, just yeah then it's all based on this locked, locked king. Can we see this moment where he uh, went into the rook end game on move 34? Yeah, I think when the game ends, then we will jump there. Yeah, because we, we also have time before the next next round but i mean i don't like to move somewhere before it does not end because it also has the potential that it could easily end soon i also think nothing will happen in this position yeah yeah it's of course the golden opportunity for arjun yeah he hasn't won a game yet i mean uh, we have seen in Vesti's case yeah that if you win the first game it's so much easier to play afterwards yeah Okay, Black had to try this e5, okay, 6 check f, e, f4, but I mean, there are no threats. Okay, White's king is now also in. Yeah, it's the stalemate uh -huh. idea. King e6, look a6, king e5, look a2. Yeah, it's also a yeah, stalemate, yeah. Ah, of course, okay. you can even take immediately. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, That's okay. it. It's a funny way of doing this. This is nice. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Artistic save by uh, Shakria, and we can go to move 34. Apparently, that's what, wow. Uh, this was uh, okay. The results so Magnus Carlsen gets a very important win with the black pieces against Anish Giri. Anish in a lot of trouble. Liam managed to survive against Duda. Duda missed the great chance to, to win and get the upper hand in the match. The same applies to Arjun Arigaishi, which we'll, we will now check out against Shakria Mamadilov, but it did end in a draw. And uh, Pragnanta Wesley saw game also ending a draw. So, well, a lot of fight ahead. But what was going on? So, Tadeas highlighted move 34 as a critical moment. Yeah, bishop b7, rook b8, bishop d5, and knight fc. And here, Arjun just took on f3. Yeah, he should probably go rook c2. Yeah, probably he should have played. But yeah, it's. It's understandable that you don't want to let this knight jump and give a brutal check, but probably doesn't do that much. Yeah, you just g7. Yeah, and then you are hitting the g2 pawn and the a2 pawn together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this looks like a. I mean, why actually... don't we give a few yeah. spy checks and after that he'll be? Although, although that's not true. Yeah, I mean, we need maybe to be more precise. Maybe we need to go knight e5, king f6. But why after King G7? What do you do? Check. Oh, no, no there's no check. On... I'm sorry, there is no check. Yeah, there, there is, is no check. check. Yeah, this yeah. bishop on d5 is incredible. Yeah, defending this. If there is no this... check, then why just resigns? Yeah. Yes, yes. It's and we and basically without knight e5 check, there is no much, not much of an intrigue. Ah, in fact, black was maybe King G3. King G3. Is this? Yeah, has to be played, but. And then uh, rook. A2, rook, b6. This is that famous pawn that doesn't win. 
Yeah, you you don't believe in this pawn. Yeah? I don't believe in this a pawn. No, maybe we need somehow to save that pawn, but again, not so easy. At least, yeah, this one is not so easy. Yeah, not so easy. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, and what what did Arjun do? Arjun took the took the knight. I believe that yeah, he he just saw that this is an element of win. Yeah, rook b one, and he started pushing, but his king got logged. Yeah, king g three, b five. Is this still it looks did he go king f7 here or not? He did not, yeah. I think this is what he should have tried, of course. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean this this look beastly. I mean, just open up your king. I mean, not let let it be boxed. And I don't believe in white surviving this. Yeah, it's so famous that you put a and then you doesn't matter where if you have to go to the back rank, no, no problem. And then and then you walk. At least black would get some chances. Yeah, yeah with these advanced pawns, I mean, mm -hmm. this looks. Uh... Yeah, he should have activated his king. Still, yeah, a lot wow. to learn for those young players in end games. Yeah, king f7. I mean, okay, this is this is a tempo because after rook b3, rook b7, and the point is, I thought like, why did uh, Shakriya let this happen? But his problem was that he cannot lock the king out immediately because black pushes them b4 and then a3 and. Mm -hmm. And then B C A to break through. Yeah. So it was very important to get the pawn to A C first. And then after Rook B C Rook B7. Rook takes B5. He needs to take on E3. And of course, Shakriya, Rook A5, A3, Rook A7, box the king again. And we saw from, from here, yeah, basically. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, basically. Aha. Uh -huh. So what a what an important motive. I mean, everyone who, who checks out our road, yeah, please pay attention to this that. You have to avoid this, this boxing. Yeah, because the rugby and king f6 suddenly black was stuck and and nothing was was going on. Yeah, yeah, you need your king in game. Okay, we have what eight minutes till the start of the round. Maybe it's a good opportunity to take a three minute break and exactly. Right yeah, we, we take a three minutes break and we ride back. Stay with us. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. My name is Rafael Diaz and I have been passionate about chess since I was 14 years old. Chess taught me a lot of things when I was a teenager, like how to think strategically and how to make decisions based on logical reasoning. It also taught me to find the determination to pursue my goals, which later on helped me to obtain a PhD in physics. Chess has helped me so much that I always wanted to find a way to make more people interested and attracted to this wonderful game. My other passion, video games, led me to create my own game studio minimal games. We are now a team of eight people and we have been working for the past two years in our most ambitious project to date, Chessarama. Chessarama is a collection of chess inspired games, each with a different set of rules and themes like medieval fantasy, farming, samurai and even soccer. Our objective is to give players a modern gameplay experience using inspirations from chess tactics, strategies and culture to create original puzzle and turn-based games all in one package. The reason why I'm here today is to announce our partnership with Play Magnus Group founded by the five times world chess champion Magnus Carlsen and creator of the Champions Chess Tour, the world's most innovative sport event to emerge in the last few years. As part of this partnership, Chessarama will become an official sponsor of the Champions Chess Tour for the remainder of 2022 and for the whole season season of 2023. We will also be an official partner of the next FIDE World Championships broadcast on Chess24 channels. It is a big honor to have Play Magnus Group supporting Chessarama's mission of bringing even more people to the magical world of chess. I invite you to join us in this adventure by adding Chessarama on your Steam wishlist 
and by following along both the game and Play Magnus on social media. Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Pragyananda. Do you want to use my games to improve your chess? Now you can do. We have handpicked 50 puzzles from my games played in Champions Chess Tour this season. I went Bishop C5, D4 and Queen E4. Yeah, another crucial win for the qualifications to the topic. You can download it for free just by going to chess24.com slash puzzle pack. Enjoy solving. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Hello everybody, I am Grandmaster David Anton Guijarro. I'm Magnus Carlsen. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top Grandmaster. I'm Grandmaster Nils Grandelius from Sweden. I am Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pentala from India. Welcome everybody. My name is Yanni Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable? A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. And welcome back, everyone. Wow. I mean, this, this first round, uh, Anish Giri losing with the white pieces against Magnus Kars, and this is exactly what should have never happened. I mean, now Magnus is in a total chilling mode, yeah, getting the upper hand with the black pieces. I don't know how to stop Magnus after this. What, what is your take? Was Anish way too emotional and way too aggressive after yesterday's uh, checkmate that he received? Was this something on his mind? No, no, no. It just he got a more complex position from the opening that than he was ready for. Like he played f five because he believed in it, and um, and then somehow the situation you know spiraled out of control. There was of course this decisive moment where he could play queen e three and um, and g four, but uh, we probably correctly judged that it was not a very human way of thinking. Exactly, it, it was very unlikely with three, three and a half minutes to, mm -hmm. to find that incredible precise way that uh, you, you basically seemingly giving up the the attack. Yeah, he wanted to keep on going and then he sacrificed the, the bishop. Yeah, this was the key moment. Yeah, when uh, Anish sacrificed with f5, we don't know exactly if it was necessary or not. It looks like a play... very complex position. Maybe he could play bishop f2. Knight a4 and then bishop h4. Maybe he could uh, get some compensation and not burn all the bridges. Yeah, it basically we have seen something very similar in the game. Yeah, because he also after f5 ef, queen g3, mm -hmm. g6, he offered the trade of the dark squared bishops. Yeah, so he, he had definitely this idea in mind, which is very typical. But he abandoned the square e6, right? Maybe he could, you know, keep the pawn and who knows. 
Yeah, suddenly black gets the e6 square for his bishop, and the, okay, it was a big mess. Magnus navigated better in these uh, murky waters. And uh, what else do we have? Well, already lift off. The second game has started in uh, Jan Shistov Duda Liam Le game. It's a Catalan. We also see that Arjun Adigaish is sticking with one move, knight f3. D5, G3 going for some reality structures. Shaklia repeats the line that he played against Magnus yesterday. And uh, the Magnus Carson, Anish Giri, and the Wesley So Pragnanda game has not started yet. Yeah, some, some guys are very impatient to start their games, right? Yeah, they want to be in time, yeah, and, uh, and the stars are coming a bit late. Yeah, this is the usual scenario. It has always been like this, right? Yeah, I think Kasparov was uh, the one who introduced, yeah, that he was always coming five well, minutes late. I mean, Bobby Fischer introduced this long before Kasparov was alive. Basically. Uh -huh, but yeah, this I did not see myself. Yeah, with, with Gary, I had these encounters many, many times, yeah, that he would come late. And and then I understood my strategy that never just sit there yeah, and, and wait for Gary, because then it feels like, yeah, you are sitting, you are the student, and then the big maestro is coming all the photographers finally are shooting him and, and so on. And I was always staying far away so that he, he, he would never exactly enjoy this moment. Yeah, It was mind, some mind games. Ah, you actually wait for him to sit down and then you appear. <laughs> and then I'm coming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> who is being clever here? Yeah, just, exactly. Uh, yeah. Who is maestro now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was a big fitness. I mean, once I discovered this trick, then, then I felt much, much more comfortable facing Gary. And of course, it helped that in the meantime, my opening repertoire has already improved. Uh, yeah. I think the the some of the youngest players now in the tour they they just don't know just what a terrifying beast Gary was in his prime. I don't think like Pragnananda and Arjun they they know what we had to deal with, or if they can even imagine. Yeah, because the I remember my games against Gary, for example. Okay, in '94 when I played my very first uh, game against him in Horgen. Switzerland, uh, I was just 14 years old. I became the youngest grandmaster. And thanks to this, I got this invitation to this incredible super tournament. And he was just way too strong. Yeah? So I, I didn't need to be super nervous or pay attention to all these finesses because I had no chance. And then in 97, Tilburg, I think, was the second game. I was already stronger than before, but still my opening repertoire didn't really give me chance to, to really hope for something. And then the first really exciting moment in 99 Linares, that was the third game when I felt like, okay, I'm first of all in Linares. Yeah, so I'm top 10 player. Mm -hmm. I belong here. And uh, I also have some special preparation, but I still did not sleep the whole night. I was so excited that will the strategy work out or not? Will I be able to use a novelty that we, we prepared? It, it was very interesting. And then I got my first draw against Gary. What was it? Grunfeld or what was no, it? No, it, uh, it was this uh, two knights, Sveshnikov when e6, knight f6, knight c6, knight x6, b5. Ah, oh, that and, one, yeah. And then I played this novelty of Adorian with bishop b7, which uh, forced Gary to think like for 40 minutes. Yeah, it was it was a very special moment. He actually played the best, mm -hmm. but and he was putting pressure on me, but I managed to, to escape there. But all right, enough nostalgia, enough history. Now let's face what's going on. First of all, yeah, Arjun is playing this very sharp uh, line. I believe this is one of the sharpest, yeah, that it's seemingly it's, it's some symmetrical stuff, but this knight c 94 queen b3 brings some new spice to the position. Knight d2, attacking the pawn on d5, and then breaking the center. So there is some disbalance here. We move on. Magnus Carlsen and Anish Giri, a Grimfeld. And Magnus already spending two, uh, two minutes. I mean, he did not expect the Grimfeld against Anish. Ah, he's just, um, yeah, cho choosing a line, right? Yeah, he because he's leading them. the match, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no reason to go for very sharp lines. Yeah, he just wants to... Control things. Nevertheless, I'm very curious that after spending two minutes, 
or two and a half, what, what he will come up with. All right, Magnus is thinking. Let's check out Duda versus Liam. What is this? I mean, this Catalan stuff. Is this I ah, Knight BD7? Do you know this move? Well, I've seen it before, but I'm not intimately familiar with the details. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's it's quite a rare move. Yeah, knight b7, castle c6, a4, a5, knight c3, bishop b4, queen c2, castles knight a2, uh, like this. Okay, but this looks uh, fairly normal for black. Yeah, no, I begin to wonder, yeah, why did I suffer so much in my life against Catalan where you can just play an IBD7 and get this position? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I believe that it's connected also that uh, Duda is still kind of uh, kind of a newbie, yeah, to to Catalan uh, structures. I, I don't think that it's his main repertoire yet, but we see that he's experimenting with it and he gets uh, more and more experience. You, you can't know all the lines, yeah? It seems that he's working on, on openings so much more than he used to, right? Yeah, it looks like some really systematic work is behind. Yeah, no, um, must be nice. Yes, no, I, I also had exactly the same impression that when he suddenly started, because playing the Catalan is not like this that you can do without working, but at the same time, we know exactly that Black has so many options, yeah, that sometimes uh, being a new Cat Catalan player, you... Don't prioritize checking knight bd7 yet, yeah? It it comes later. Yeah, okay, e4, so it's a big battle ahead, but it feels that black should be fine. Let's get back to Magnus because we have we have a direction. Anish playing my old Grimfeld repertoire. I mean, in the year 2000, I mean, the, those days when I was playing the Grimfeld, it was my kind of knowledge that if... White plays this Kramnik system, yeah, with rook c1 and then trying to play for all these endgames. Then after castles, knight fc, I'm going to go for bishop g4. Yeah, this was this was my trademark. However, then later, I believe people started to play this bishop e2, queen a5, castles, queen takes a2. And then again, we get this rook b1 type of uh, positions and uh, I started hating this. Yeah, bishop e2, queen a5 on the board. I mean, but it already think... happened when I already long abandoned Grimfeld, so it wasn't the reason why I, I abandoned it. But do, do you think that this will happen, or do you think he'll somehow play queen d2? And... Well, I, I do think that I believe Magnus has already played a game like this. I think we've seen it in one of those online tournaments. I think I was doing commentary on something like this where he allowed queen takes a2. I, I also think so, yeah. I, I believe he had a game like this. The chat actually just loves you. Yeah, I'm just reading some of this chat. It's a big fan of yours. Well, and I love them. Yeah, because this is the point. Yeah, if, if chat would not like me, I would not be doing the commentary. Yeah, this is a mutual respect. Uh, because, okay, basically, I always feel that if you do commentary, you have to do the, the commentary for the people. Yeah, if, you, if they want to see you, you come back. If they don't, then, okay, you just leave. Yeah, that's my philosophy. And thanks for the chat. I'm still here. I think this happens automatically if nobody would watch you. <laughs> <laughs> nobody would ask you anymore. Yeah, just uh, exactly. kick you out or the phone will never ring or what? Uh, no, no messages are coming. Yeah. Yeah, but then you can still kind of try your own YouTube channel or whatever. Yeah, but uh, no, I, I never had these uh, uh, intentions. But yeah, you see Magnus knowing that he's leading in the match. There is no reason not to give a pawn to Anish and to hope for him to get unbalanced position. Queen D to a very professional reaction. Basically, once Magnus is leading in the match, he becomes a different sort of animal, right? He just um, he's, he, he goes for the zero risk, which very often helps him to win even more games, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah, because <laughs> because the open end field, like uh, Shakri has suicided himself yeah, yesterday. It's uh, Basically, Magnus was only there collecting. Yeah, I mean, please give it to me. I, I won't give you anything myself. Yeah, all right. Okay, so this is a beginning phase. A uh, lot of psychology involved because Anish also, maybe otherwise would be happy, but knowing he lost the first game, then it's not such a dream scenario as well. What else? Ah, we haven't 
checked out Wesley against Prague yet. It's one of those very classical Italians, I mean, the modern classics with, with pawn on a4, and we do see that Wesley uh, plays it. We have seen Prague himself was opting for Bishop Beastly against Anish. Yeah, Prague likes this Bishop Beastly setup, but I think Wesley almost always goes for the a4 setup. And castles b4, this kind of move order. Do you do you know this or it's it's not the most usual, yeah? People mm -hmm. automatically play the move hc. I have uh, of late been almost exclu exclusively playing bishop b6 with black. Uh -huh. I keep the pawn on a7, I play bishop b6. So I have been successfully cutting all of this modern theory out. Yeah, and then bishop b6 castles and then and 97, 97 yeah. and, if, and if you, you know, if you come and take my bishop on b6, then just please, you know, it simplified my life a lot. Yeah, and it takes quite some time, yeah, to take that bishop. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and also uh, it makes it easier to navigate because I never have to remember a6, a5, all of these things. Just bishop b6, h6, 97. It's a very simple way to play chess. I have been advocating it also online for two and a half years now. Mm -hmm. Like every time we do commentary, I say bishop b6, and uh, it still hasn't quite caught on as I expected. But uh, Fabi was doing th this system, yeah, in the candidates. Because because I gave him the same speech, you see. <laughs> exactly. I, after this speech, I already understood where, where this came from. Yeah, it, uh, And it also worked. Yeah, against Alexeyenko, he got a great position or something. Yeah, yeah, he 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 was he was playing this very successfully with Black. Uh, but uh, in fact, I picked it up from Mamed Yarov. Mm -hmm. At some point in some rapid tournament, Mamed Yarov was just kind of stubbornly playing bishop b6, h6, 97. And I was just admiring the simplicity of the approach. I like simple solutions. They work better. Yeah, but somehow I don't see it anymore from Shakriya. Yeah, so he influenced you. You are now a big fan, but he abandoned it for some reason. Well, you see, I mean, I, I play seven tournament games a year, so for my purposes, it's quite all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And okay, now we see that this is a quite an uncompromising and un untypical, atypical uh, kind of Italian. Yeah, we don't really see this bishop b2, bishop bc happen so easily. Usually the knight goes to g3, the pawn is on h3, bishop retreats to f1 if you already not like this so... Wesley has his own view, yeah, on things. Well, in fact, he plays it like a, like a briar almost, yeah? Well, its pawn structure is more typical of, uh, of another opening. Uh, the queen on c2, bishop on b2, pawn on b4. Um, I don't know, how, how do you play this position with black? Above all, do you play bishop e6 or don't? Yeah, mm -hmm. or do you feel provoked to start some kingside action? Yeah, some knight h5, queen f6, uh, knight f4, now that white has placed all his pieces on the on the queen side. That is, a, that is also a good question. Yeah, I mean, I always feel tempted, yeah, whenever this bishop leaves to leaves this diagonal, then okay, come on, let's let's uh, attack. I mean, usually I'm not the type of guy who, who goes for a direct attack, but if I'm provoked like this. And then I might. Well, I would be probably more leaning towards knight h7, yeah? Like a, a less mm -hmm. um, burning bridges approach, yeah? Knight h7, knight g5. Because so the I other knight can anyway land on f4. Yeah, because I think yeah. when you play knight h5, g3, it becomes positionally very risky, right? Because both your knights are sort of sidelined and you almost have to sacrifice at some point. Yes, that's perfectly true, yeah. That uh, basically... Knight h5 and then white plays g3 and you will most probably have to sacrifice on f4 one of the, the knights if... Okay, queen f6, bishop g4, g3 also weakens the fc knight and so on. But plug ops for d5, I mean, to me d5 looks strange because usually, like you mentioned, in the Breyer also, this bishop on b2 is very well prepared for any kind of opening up the center. Take on e5, for example, with the knight, yeah? And then takes, takes, c4, boom, boom. Or is Prague trying some boom boom himself with bishop f2 or knight g4? Well, bishop f2 and then maybe queen b6. But in fact, I don't understand. What do you do after e takes d5? I mean, why do I need to take e? On yeah, e5? exactly. No, no. I mean, I just showed that mm -hmm. in uh, in Breyer it's typical to take, but in Breyer the bishop is never on a7. It's on mm -hmm. f8 or on g7. So it's a different stuff. And you say that just take e d5. Because I think that the, the, the knight on g6 is hanging, right? 
Uh, even the knight is hanging on g6, yeah. Because if, if black takes on d4, I take on c6. Now, okay, black would have to go something like d3 because the knight is hanging. Yeah, I will have this. Day. But besides, also, I wanted to highlight that often, uh, okay, for example, some rook e8, we trade something, and then even some c4, cd5, c5 is often dangerous for black. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm, yes. I'm not a believer in this for black at all. I wonder what his point is. Maybe he wants to go e4 after ed, but doesn't seem to work. Yeah, hard to believe. Yeah, what, what is he up to after ed5? Or does he believe that he can just recapture with cd and he can sacrifice on e5 because of knight g4? That is possible. That that could be. I mean, that, that feels like in the spirit. Yeah, ed, cd. Okay. Yeah, and d5, you go knight g4, knight d4, you take on e5. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, already kind of interesting. All right, so that's the that's the idea behind. So Prague goes for d6, d5, trying to open up the bishop on a7. And then what about if white plays, for example, the move c4? Is, is it possible? Takes and bishop f5. Yeah, that's the first thing that needs to be calculated. Feels fine for black, yeah? Well, the first impression is fine. Yeah, yeah, first impression is fine. All right, so, okay, not, not so simple. And West is taking his time. We, we can jump now to some... Wow, okay, Arjun. I feel like Arjun is very determined today. It looks promising. It, it does look promising, yeah. Yeah, bishop h6, kind of clever. It's also typical Mamad Yadov, yeah, that he understands that if white gets one more move to play queen d2 and then h6 appears, then, mm -hmm. then this will be terrible for black. So bishop h6, practically speaking, I think only move. He's also provoking a four a bit, yeah? Yeah, you, you never know exactly. Is that is that a good move or... Okay, Arjun goes for it. Well, Arjun knows. <laughs> yeah, well, and he also needs his look on c1. Yeah, he needs to guard the only weakness in his position, the c3 pawn. Do you think we'll see uh, an exchange sacrifice at some point? I also have the same feeling. Yeah, also knowing Shakriya, yeah, something like rook d6 and then collecting this d6 pawn is. And yeah. We were right. In Vesli saw Pragnanda game, ED5 happened and Black recaptured CD5 instantly. That was Prague's intention. And this is a razor sharp stuff. Yeah, we, we, we talked about that if White captures D5, then Black comes with Knight G4, hitting on F2, and it's not so easy to protect this. Maybe, maybe you were right about C4, yeah? Maybe I should... Well, but it also didn't work, yeah. So, and you see, computer believes that white is better, but I, I'm not sure. How is this really better? I mean, always this HD move is missing, yeah, from white's. Uh, that, mm -hmm. that, that's why. It yeah, was... I thought knight e5, then rook e5, and then yes. d, and then knight g4, rook f1. Yeah, maybe this is. So yeah, first he goes for rook e5, yeah, correct. Take, take, and then knight g4, rook f1. And then we're in time to protect if queen h4, the knight f3. Yeah, on the board. I mean, you are razor sharp, but I only don't understand why is white really better here. Okay, maybe not too too much better. Yeah? Knight takes e5, and I thought maybe c4. And c4, yeah. Yeah, this is the point. Yeah, and after all, black has not yet developed... His bishop and then the rook on a8 is still out of the game. I mean, Black wow. will probably survive this, yeah? Knight c4, but it's dangerous, yeah? Takes it's dangerous, queen. yeah. This free and this is exactly the positions where Wesley is so incredibly strong. By the way, we have also seen that he was, how strong he was that he navigated this uh, d5 sharp operation very well. Uh, he has this very good feeling for safety, right? Staying safe, staying, uh, minimizing risk. He's good at this. Yes, but uh, it also requires very precise mm -hmm. calculation. And this is what he also shows, yeah, that 
he he has he has this total package yeah that is needed to to take control in modern chess yeah wow okay so he handled the situation probably he is putting some pressure what about magnus yeah magnus plays this very systematic stuff but i don't think that it's no he is even playing no no i'm not liking he's he's somehow paying too much attention to being very safe i mean or not risking much but this is not Magnus style, what he's doing. He's just, yeah, playing for a draw methodically. Yeah, I'm, I'm not liking this. Not, not a fan at all. I mean, Black can equalize easily. Maybe can also even try for some for more. But probably Magnus knows exactly that it's fine. And wow, look FC it and the evolution, but jumps. Yeah, he did, did not like this. Look FC it move. All. Okay, now I can't take the, the other pawn. Yeah, he could just go e6 and pick up that pawn. Um, but also this should be fine unless yeah, but this is this is dangerous because bishop f1 and then e5 you open up the bishop and why do suddenly for attack? Yeah, yeah, f7, b7 pawns. Wow. I mean, I even go as far that Magnus will win this. I mean, this is now very much his style, so I'm taking back everything. You know, Magnus fooled myself, Anish, everyone included, because it looked like Magnus has no plan, but in fact he had. Yeah, and, and what you were advocating just to play e6, yeah, or something? Yeah, I thought it looked very natural to play e6, and after rook b7, for instance, I would jump knight c4, and I thought the bishop on f3 looks a bit silly somehow. Yeah, also, I mean, rook fb8 was possible mm -hmm. as well, yeah, just to trade this Active rook and black can never be worse. Yeah, and what a change of of things. Yeah, and suddenly pawn is on e5, rook is rook remained on the seven, bishop on f3, putting pressure on the b7 pawn. This is very scary. I, I mean, I don't know how scary it is. I also I thought you of all people would have a bit more faith in the Grunfeld ending. No, no, I mean. <laughs> I like good Grunfeld endings, but usually my philosophy is that if something goes wrong in the Grunfeld, then it's then it's not not such a good news. Mm -hmm. I, I see dangers, and I also somehow remember games where things went wrong in this in these structures. Rook d8, for instance. Yeah, rook d8 covering the d5 square. Just yeah, in very case. important for me to cover d5 so that I can jump with my knight again. Yeah, okay. Good news for you that bishop on d4, rook a2 puts pressure on f2. Mm -hmm. But hang on. So, and you want to look this... Can I go bishop g5? Can I harass you a bit? That's not nice of you. Well, but I have to. I mean, you are just killing me in all the lines. I have to, <laughs> I have to pay you back a bit, yeah? Just to feel better. Bishop g5 feels like a good move, yes. Yeah, this is... I mean, the bishop on f4 was doing not much. Yeah, imagine bishop gets to f6, bishop is already on f3. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, it feels dangerous. King yeah, f8 crazy. played. I mean, Anish will lose this. King f8 is not a good move. No, not at all. I mean, King okay, he wants makes... rook b7, rook e8. Yeah, he's trying to force things, but... But then, like, bishop c... The, he makes himself vulnerable for tactics now. Yeah, he's just... But how exactly? I mean, okay, we see evolution bar is screaming that there is some problem. For instance, I can play e6. You can? Well, I can try. Rook e6. Bishop h6 check. Yeah, let's let's check it out. Then I have to run because bishop g7 and rook b8 check would win the piece. Mm -hmm. So king needs to run on e8 and it's scary. Yeah, now maybe rook d1. But okay, it's a bit speculative also, yeah? You are giving everything. But I will mate you. Aha, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> I also wanted to mate you, but now I'm suddenly stuck on the... Uh, I have to defend this terrible position, yeah? Yeah, rook, rook takes b7, rook e8, by the way, on the board. And there is also the other way that with bishop h6 check, king g8, e6, you can destroy the pawn structure. But 
maybe then this is you not take with the pawn yeah and yeah if I have take... e6 right away i can take on h7 exactly yeah so maybe this e6 but okay this this is not so simple it's not simple but, life uh... is not simple yeah okay what's the clock situation okay Magnus still has eight minutes versus 614 I thought oh, the most natural was bishop c6 here, but bishop c6, rook c8, I don't know how much progress it makes. Mm -hmm. Just to highlight that, yeah, rook e6 would run into checkmate. Bishop h6, mm -hmm. king g8, rook d8, check. Mm -hmm. So... But you, you say that just rook c8 and then you hit the bishop. Yeah. But also this looks so dangerous, yeah? Yeah, e6, yeah, no? e6, or, or also here, rook d1, I don't know. Or... Yeah, but also this e6, yeah, your favorite. Okay, I can still take knight e6, yeah, luckily, because bishop is hanging, yeah, but... All mm -hmm. right, I mean, up to Magnus to decide. Very promising, but just very quickly, what we talked about happened, yeah? I mean, we know Shakya, he can't mm -hmm. tolerate this bishop for too long, yeah? He sacrificed on d6. And goes for queen ac, he wants to take back on d6. And okay, maybe computer says white is uh, better, but actually black has a very solid position. And Magnus goes bishop d1. Wow, if that's the move, then, then it's fantastic. Yeah, I actually thought of bishop d1, but I thought black would be able to like go rook b2 or something. Yeah, that was also my, but apparently then uh, rook b2, maybe you can include bishop c1 or what? Uh, bishop c1, rook b5, and bishop a4, yeah? Uh, one beautiful line, yeah. Uh, maybe there is just no way for black to, um, wow. to stay on the b-file. Wow. Yeah, so basically then after, after bishop d1, black has to be very careful, yeah? Because this rook b2, bishop c1 is... Is maybe just killing. And rook, rook a3 looks very ugly. Then we don't press the f2 pawn, but maybe we have to do it. But rook a3 is also very vulnerable diagonal. Yeah, because... Very vulnerable. I mean, I, I just... Tanya has mentioned that rook a3 is probably better, but it would have not even crossed my mind. It looks so ugly. Well, I, I mean, okay, Magnus... I mean, he didn't want anything from this game. Yeah, just safety and then he ends up kind of uh, winning in 22 moves what is this anish will be kicking himself yeah, seemingly magnus is enjoying life yeah he's listening to music drinking some some water there And Anish is in a lot of pain. I mean, look at his body language. Yeah, he, he felt like this is completely innocent. Yeah, rook b2 played, of course. Yeah, it's the human move, but now bishop c1 and... Ah, and we are told, yeah, Magnus is drinking liquid dead. This is uh, this is the canon uh, water that is, is there. That's the name of the water. And bishop c1 on the board. I mean, to, to each his own, yeah? I personally wouldn't feel comfortable drinking something that's called liquid death. But, yeah, but if you know that, <laughs> but, but if you if it, if you know that it's actually good stuff, yeah, and it's, it, and it's just water, then it's fine. Oh, it's fine, yeah, but uh, how do you call a drink liquid death with due respect? Yeah, this uh, very much feels like United States, yeah? Yeah. I mean, in, in France, it's impossible to, to hear something like this, yeah? I mean, it's in, like in, in Uzbekistan, for instance, this would be a very tough marketing choice to sell. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but then we're talking about it, yeah? Maybe that's exactly the point. That's exactly, yeah. Now everybody wants to check it out. Yeah, what is this? Wow, okay. So in any case, it works for Magnus, yeah? Because, uh, yeah, Bishop C1. 
I mean, I think Anish just can't believe. Yeah, he has played enough Grimfels. He has seen basically everything, but not this that you can just lose like this in 23 moves. He plays rook b1. Um... Okay, but after bishop c2, there is no, nothing going on, yeah? Yeah, bishop c2. That is also maybe somehow tactically winning with bishop a4, but maybe it's unnecessary. Bishop c2 is so much simpler. Yeah, maybe he wants to, but I mean, rook takes c1, rook takes c1, rook c8, but I don't believe in this. Well, rook d1, yeah, even. Yeah, okay, then bishop takes f2, rook takes c2 check, but it should be lost. Yeah, it's uh, the, the rook on the seventh is beautiful, knight on b6 is terrible. No, it's uh, basically, and also evolution bar confirms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are in a lot of trouble with black. Yeah, maybe maybe you have this really acute feeling for, for danger in the Grunfeld ending because you started disliking it way before the computer did, right? Yeah, well, no, I mean, when <laughs> I saw rook takes e7 and then white plays e5, it was finished. For me, it was like, okay, black we lose it in five moves, yeah, or, or you have to be a computer. It's very, very tricky. It's a very good call, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the sense of danger I have, yeah, delivering checkmate is my problem, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, bishop c2. Yeah, rook b5, bishop a4, your tactic is happening now. And this is not the usual typical exchange sacrifice that really gives black chances. Yeah, this one should be technically winning. Yeah, yeah also this bishop a6 check will come and box the king. No, this is horrible. So Magnus taking his time probably to, to decide, does he want to include bishop h6 before bishop a4? Well, he has this trick, yeah, like bishop h6, king g8, e6, maybe ruin black spawns a bit. Uh, and, and then, then still. Six, then, then bishop a4. Huh? Uh -huh. By the way, bishop a6 check played, king g8 and bishop a4 now. Mm -hmm. Okay, not yeah, yeah, because around. this is the point that the king is boxed, yeah, so you can't mm -hmm. even take the e5 pawn, it's just uh, hopeless. Yeah, knight c3 will be played, okay, there is no other move, but it you, doesn't do anything. You called it, yeah, he did lose this endgame in five moves, yeah? Yeah, he, yeah, <laughs> that, 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 was, that was clear, because Magnus is like a computer, yeah, if he already gets the chance, then he, he won't hesitate. This is also so impressive, yeah, that, I mean, how, how many times we have spoiled good positions and everything, but in Magnus's case, it looks so easy, yeah, that he, he gets the better position and just effortlessly con converts it. Uh, he is really good at this, yeah. I mean, we've had a lot of great champions. Uh, I think nobody converted quite like, uh, like Magnus did. I think this is also the thing. Yeah, you remember the times when like Levon Aronian was clearly number two in the world? Yes. And he was, I think, as good as Magnus in everything he did, except that, yeah. Like Magnus was just better at, at converting, it was just cleaner. Yeah, Levon excelled more in uh, these uh, very dynamic positions, yeah, with a lot of creativity. Well, and... he, he really excelled in, in getting uh, a better position. But his conversion was always a bit uh, a bit choppy yeah, compared to Magnus, yeah, who just really converts like a computer. Yeah, and look at this now. Also, this bishop e3, yeah, giving up the e5 pawn, but then uh, pinning with bishop d4, yeah, finishing the game. Yeah. No, but also uh, he really converts fast. Yeah, like there are no secrets for him. Every move, bishop e3 in one second, you know, rook e1 in one second. It's just there are no secrets for him, and it's just not fair. Yeah, and, and look at this. Yeah, I mean, Magnus, even I, I mean, he's hiding. No, he, yeah, okay. He's just, he's just happy. He's just chilling. Like, okay, come on. I'm listening to Abba and uh, this is the melody. Yeah, I mean, he goes with the melody and just crushing. Mm -hmm. Anish done to a minute. I mean, I have never really seen Anish lose control so easily and so quickly. Yeah, takes, takes. Knight d5, look f3. Basically, it's it's finished. Yeah, I mean, he'll win another match in two games, in two and a half games. Yeah, it's, it's... 
Yeah, and then in the interview we say, well, I mean, what what do you want if I win game one? Nobody can stop me. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Anish designs. It's two zero. How quickly things are moving on with Magnus? Unbelievable. All right, let's get an update on Jan Shishtov. Duda and Duda in a lot of trouble. Look at this, down to 30 seconds versus six minutes. And the position is horrible. The knight on A2 and the rook on B2 dominate everything. Look, DD2 comes as well. Strange, I really wanted to play G6 when I saw the position. To, to stop F5, yeah? To stop F5, yeah. White's last um, attempt at counterplay. Why allow yeah. it, right? F5 is F5 is played. My first intention was just king F7, king E7, yeah? So that if you sacrifice, then I block on the dark squares. But you can do this now, yeah? You can play king F7. King F7, yeah. Probably that's... Probably very smart. And then just go king E7 or we, we take... We can take him. Yeah. Bishop h3 checking. Is yeah, the okay. A3. Let uh, let Liam uh, prove what, why, why he opted for rook dd2. I absolutely agree with you. Yeah, that basically white had only this f4 f5 idea. I would be also tempted to just stop it. Let's just highlight that, yeah, EF5, E6, and then, for example, King F, yeah, King F7 played, F6, e King E6, and uh, we are back to counter play for white. Yeah, that's what we kind of felt. Yeah, I stopped after King E6. I was not so happy, but H for mistake. Yeah, I wonder how exactly white should have played. I mean, honestly, I was worried of some bishop h3 check, king e7, rook f1, and then the rook takes h2, e6, rook f7 check. But I mean, maybe it was nothing, but it, it was the reason why I disliked mm -hmm. it. Yeah, to me, it didn't quite seem to work, but probably somewhere down the line. Right? Yes, That's something check, along yeah. Yeah, that, that direction, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now the problem is that black is always ready to trade the rooks with rook c1 also, yeah? Rook f3 or rook c3? Rook c3 is a problem as well, yeah? Rook c3 could be a big problem, yes. Yeah, okay, rook af1 will be played, but you can even somehow trade and... Okay, but white only needs one move, e6 and rook f7 to, for some counterplay. The good thing for Duda that uh, part of having the bad position, so it's not that good that he has nothing to lose already. Yeah, so he can go all in, and what happens happens. Well, in this position, yes. I mean, but how does I mean we we do see the evolution by claiming that Black is almost like winning, but what is the move? Look H two. Why is black winning? Um, yeah, I feel a bit lazy. Yeah, and it's also way too complicated. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not like that we can just shout out easy, simple moves. Yeah. No, I thought like rook c1, I was wondering, takes, takes, e6. e6, yeah. Uh, because why doesn't have a big threat? But okay, rook f7, rook g, and then who knows, the bishop is joining the party. Maybe g6? Okay, no, this this is becoming dramatic. I mean, uh, this, this isn't the simple winning position for black. Maybe for a computer, but not for a human. Well, Liam is a, is a great combination of both, yeah? Yeah, rook c3, rook f one and now also Duda is getting the 10 seconds extra. Hmm. I'm not sure that this is so simple.
you can take, take, and there is some rook d8, rook f8 idea. Maybe that just, but okay, e6, rook f8, then rook d7 coming with rook d7 check as well. Do you think black is winning after rook e2, e6, rook takes e6? Well, I think it's hard to call, yeah, because uh, the king is coming and then who knows if it's winning. Yeah, probably not. No, the king is probably yeah. too too quick. Yeah, rook d8, it's very human, but I don't see. e6, rook f8, rook d3, I still don't see the, the point. I mean, I do know that Tadea says that actually with knight c1, black can transpose to the computer line, which is apparently the cleanest mm -hmm. way to win. But humanly, I mean, this isn't the... The reason why you played rook d8, yeah, that uh, you want to stop rook f7. Well, you can't even repeat once and then play knight c1, right? Well, but I mean, knight c1 has to come to your mind. I'm not sure that it, it's really coming. It it certainly wouldn't come to mind, that's for sure. Well, I mean, you're, you're too modest. No, I mean, simply the, 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 the house is burning, yeah, rook f7, can't play the e-pawn is coming and... I'm going somewhere mysteriously with knight to see when I will never forgive myself if it backfires. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what is this? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it is just a check. Yeah. Well, if somebody tells me that knight c1 is minus five, I, I will go, but uh, I, I can't be sure of that. And Wesley saw Prague actually end in a draw. Prague was under some pressure, but he held against Wesley quite impressive. But how to, and uh, Liam down to two minutes. I mean, this is this is dramatic. Please don't look at the evaluation bar. Computers are merciless and and brutal in such situations. In human play, anything can happen here. I mean, in the sense that White might save this. Yeah, look at it. Humano, look this. This C five. That's that's the human direction, and already drama is guaranteed. Rook d7, king f6. Yeah, and then we have rook c7, black goes c4, yeah, and uh, counts on this b pawn. He wants to break. Ah, maybe rook d5 is better. Rook d5 to, to have access to the b5 pawn. And if c4? Yeah, and then, okay, something, yeah. Rook f5, check king e7, rook b5, then some rook b7, check, or oh, that's that's nothing. Oh, well, cb, it looks like nothing. Yeah, probably not. This knight on a2, what a monster, yeah, protecting the b4 pawn. Incredible. Okay, just very quickly to, to highlight the line we talked about. Rook f5, check king e7, rook takes b5, and then cb3. And this monster knight is opening up the way for, for the pawn. Rook c7 played. c4 b takes c4 b3 and this is the question how to how to stop this i have to say liam chose the human way and quite effective one yeah white well, will have to bring the bishop right to this diagonal bishop f1 d3 or... yeah but that is oof that is never going to work. Yeah, that's yeah. Or somehow with connecting with some e7, yeah, e7 played, and then rook c6 check, and then take on b5 and bishop f5 to activate like this. Yeah, cb5. That might be a defense. But maybe he should have given check first, yeah, because now. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. Two. Now you will go king e5, yeah, after. Mm -hmm. And then king e5, d4, yeah, and that's, that's yeah, a rook and a game. B2 check, king e5, and rook c5, king d4. Yeah, that, that's critical. And if he would have done it here after rook e8 check, then after king e5, he had rook c5 check and rook takes b5. Yeah, that's why mm -hmm. black would have been forced to king e7. Wow, what a, what a sudden turn of events. Okay, I mean, to be fair, he didn't have time for subtleties, right? Just... Yes, but I mean, okay, look at this evolution, but doesn't give in yet. Rook c6 check. Where is the hidden trick? Yeah, king e5, some rook e6 check, rook e1, but it runs into rook e7. 
Yeah, it looks completely lost to me. But then Rook B1, yeah, Rook takes his head, Rook B1, and we are still kicking, but Rook E2. Uh, no. Not the long no, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the, it's going to be the last kick, yeah, of the day. King E5. Yeah, so the, the problem is that the bishop can't reach the F5 square. Yeah, the, the square that we wanted to reach, King D5. Now bishop f5, of course, yeah, bishop oh, f5. Oh, bishop f5 and b1, bishop takes b1, oh my god. Yes, yes, this is the trick, but I mean still. Yeah, that, that one is a draw, right? That one is a draw, even without the pawn on b5, yes. yeah, h4, g3, but uh, I mean, okay, who said that we have to? We can play knight c3. A knight c3 and uh, rook e1. Yeah, then uh, it's it's a whole new game. Yeah, no, you have to go B one. Yeah. Wow, well, you have to, but okay, then it's then it's just a draw. Duda wow. is Duda is a monster. Huh? Duda is incredible. I mean, okay, he, he he maybe should have given the check first, but he always adjusts to the situation and he is never affected by the clock situation. I mean. I was commenting this word blitz in uh, St. Petersburg 2018. Yeah, when there was this, Magnus was winning all the games. He was already plus 10, plus 11. And uh, he could never calm down because uh, Duda was also winning all his games. And that's it. Yeah, this is a theoretical draw with the pawn on h4. And with the pawn on b5, yeah, now even he can put the bishop on c6. But but he, he will lose the pawn anyway because he, he, he has to stop Black's king, yeah, basically. Black gets rook b2 and then Black starts walking towards the g4 square and then you will have to play bishop f3 at some point, give the b5 pawn. I even don't know did, why he did not play king f2, yeah, just... Uh, mm -hmm. well, just I think to... he just wanted to hold on to this d pawn. Right? Yeah, but uh, this is a mirage, yeah, because mm -hmm. this... This pawn is falling anyway, and your king is cut. Luckily, it, it might still be a draw, but... But okay, I mean, normal people do not have your experience in this ending. Well, and first of all, I had twice this position. Yeah, that's that's the trick. Yeah, I, I once saved it against Halifman, the, the losing game, which is also in the Dvoretsky endgame manual because it yeah. was very important for theory. I knew nothing during the game. I was just hoping that maybe I will survive. And uh, then... Then, like half a year later, or almost a year later, against Bayavsky at the Olympia, and he got the chance to play h5 with black, yeah, and get to this structure, and there was no way to break. But like your game against Halifman and the things, the details there, they were absolutely sensational, right? Yes, I mean it's uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, mm -hmm. as I said, I knew nothing during the game what's going on. Also, Alexander didn't know. He, I even blundered this incredible rook h7. Trick, yeah, which was mm -hmm. like a fantastic resource for him. And then I got very lucky to find this stalemate idea and so on. Yeah, that that was that, that was just insane. Yeah. No, it was really insane. Yeah, it was pretty sick stuff. Yeah, it was just yeah. Really something. And I don't know if you if you saw this, yeah. At some point, uh Grigorian's Grandmaster Grigorian's wrote an article on the particularities of this ending, and then I discovered also there is so much more I didn't know. I just um Never yeah, seen I think that once you get into the the depths of, of all these endgames, you suddenly realize how rich they are because uh, the Dvoretsky endgame manual is a sensational book and it looks like, wow, everything is uh, analyzed there. But once you start digging, then you realize that, yeah, it's, there is just not enough uh, paper you had to, <laughs> to, to, to cover all endgames. And in fact, Duda gets it right. Yeah, he did not even give up the pawn and he's still holding the fortress. Now nah, he got this, yeah, he got yeah. this. And you know, since uh, we got carried away and it was so dramatic and exciting, we missed out on the momentum that Arjun actually did win his first game. We are very happy for, for him. Of course, we are really sorry for Shakriar. But uh, I mean, so far Arjun was suffering so heavily in the event that it's very nice seeing him to, to win a game and who knows, maybe the match. Yeah, no, finally, yeah, some something going right for him. 
Yeah, definitely. Already in the previous game, yeah, he was uh, close to winning. He should have won. So definitely something clinched for him today. And yeah, that's uh, that's it. It's actually a very smart uh, defense. Yeah, that's okay. The bishop is protected by the pawn and the bishop covers all the diagonal. And if king f5, then you just give bishop d7 check. King e4, you give bishop c6 check. And king e3 doesn't do much because mm -hmm. bishop is anyway protecting the fc square. So you just wait then with king g1. No, why draws this with a huge margin. And... Nevertheless, I'm a little bit surprised that Liam did not march all the way with his king to easy and then see if he can try to get some uh, Zugzwang. Of, of course, he won, but... Why not? Yeah, I don't see any Tuxwang, eh? Why just goes King G1, F1? Yeah, that's the problem, yeah. <laughs> there is no Tuxwang at all. Wow, and Duda is now up on the clock. I mean, what a save and, and Liam. Okay, in the first game, apparently Duda missed the, missed the winning chance. So in that regard, but... I believe that this was this was more systematically winning than that. That that was like an accidental chance there for Duda in the look and game. During the break, we discussed it with Tadeas. We haven't had the chance to show it. Yeah, Black just shuffles around, but not much to to do. And why is not? Do the thinking, yeah. I mean, okay, yeah. Bishop c6 played king c4. I mean, it doesn't feel like exactly with king on c4 there should be any tsukzwang, yeah. So just bishop d7 is slightly weak. Man. Okay, I mean, like you said, yeah. Why not? Uh, you you can always keep the king on f1, mm -hmm. yeah. Even with king on g1, you said you can come back. So it's the same. We are reaching the same position. Yeah. Finally, king e3. And king g1 and next king f1 back. Yeah, that's the that's the trick. Yeah, g6 and king f1 quietly. And the position where white does not manage to go h4 and black goes g5 and there is no b pawn. This one is already losing, right? Well, there is this uh, still one uh, defensive mechanism. If you can get your bishop to h5 and then king g2, that's also a fortress. It's mm -hmm. similar fortress like now with the bishop. Yeah, then you are covering this diagonal. But I think uh, you really have to get uh, the bishop there. Otherwise, you lose. Well, apparently, Grandmaster Navarro has a course on chess 24. On all these end games. On this topic, yeah. Sounds interesting. Yeah, Gotta very interesting. I mean, okay. Uh, Navala is another fanatic, yeah? He loves to know everything, and I understand with all his passion that he probably went very deep in all these endgames. Okay, now nothing happened. Bone is on g6, but still, bishop d and king e5, bishop c6. Yeah, we should inform Liam that everybody has families to go back to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, okay, this is... But this is the chess player's character, yeah? When you know that you are better and you can play on forever without any risk and you can't be punished, then you, you tend to make good use of it, yeah? <laughs> Look, see, too. Bishop e8, yeah, okay. Touching the g6 pawn, king f6, yeah, Liam does not want to trade any pawns, yeah. So king f6, now bishop c6 retreats. I mean, at some point he might, he might win some pawn, yeah, it just will not help. At some point, maybe he goes g5 and then king g5. Well, usually this is the only chance for, for black in the other position as well. Yeah, g5. And then trying to, to come from that angle. 
hg5, king g5. So that's why uh, Liam puts the rook on c2 to, okay, rook on b2 would do the same job. Yeah. I'm talking, I'm talking. But now if I've got bishop, let's say f3, and I abandon the pawn on b5 to its own devices, still a draw, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, this is the, this is the draw, but black can then start now again moving back. Yeah, if for example, let's just imagine that this pawn is gone. Yeah, you mm -hmm. play bishop f3, then black starts again this march with the king to e3, and then eventually also tries with the rook to go to g7. And then if you go king g2, then black starts to somehow push the rook g5 and h5, and then threatens h4, and you have to move with the king, and then it gets to this king f2, king h4, some race, rook take g3, and then you take on h5. Yeah, this is a very famous uh, maneuver. Ah, so it's still very, very possible to lose this, yeah? I mean, it. Uh, if you play it correctly, then not, but uh, if, if you just give one or two extra tempis for black, then then it can be lost. Yeah, no, I think it's a very big if, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then also the, the side who who is actually then finally winning has to know so many finesses. It's not like automatically you win the position, yeah? Bishop c8, rook d8, yeah. Duda is holding on to the g4 square, holding on to the diagonal. But basically by holding on to the diagonal means that he might lose this B5 pawn at some point. I think in a way, psychologically, it would be easier to play this position if you didn't have this pawn to begin with. But okay, then already maybe it's a little too late, yeah? Because you really want to have the bishop on FC, I believe. Mm -hmm. And the, yeah, he's now switching bishop B7, but hang on now, king G4? Not afraid? Uh, he he probably wants to act the king f2 and then bishop c6 king is the and go toward uh, the... he wants to run for it that's so clever yeah. no very suffering. very clever of course yeah duda just runs yeah he wants to run with his king and now maybe liam will be kicking himself of letting that king out of the box because this is not just a dead draw yeah Now, even two, that of course, king c5 is the natural, but even king c3, king c2 made some sense. But of course, we, we run with the king forward. And now b6, yeah, it's just um, it's a tempo play. Yeah? yeah, b6, b7, and okay, that's it. Because suddenly white is threatening them bishop b5. Yeah. Now, of course, you have to push the pawn. Maybe he's also looking at bishop d7, no? But it's not necessary. I mean, where is the danger? So if we go b6, h. I don't see any danger. B7, but he goes bishop d7. Ah, no, there was a danger because when you play h to king d6, that is rook b6 and king c7 ah, yeah, yeah, takes d6. Bishop yeah. is hanging, yeah. But maybe you can go bishop e4. Yeah, but bishop d7, I called it. Yeah, you called it. Your sense of. Danger, yeah? My sense of Duda. Yeah, you already know that you can trust him. But yeah, Liam is coming back with the king. Yeah, king f4, king e5. Then he wants to give a check, king d6. Still not over yet. It's still so possible. And to... look at this, king d6, a losing blunder. But I mean, okay, you need to punish it. Check. Check, mm -hmm. king c7. Wow. And king e4 going to d4. Wow. Wow. King e4, king d4. Just like the golden rule in bishop and games that you have to come from behind. But I'm I'm not sure that it's possible to spot it. King e4, king d4. Seemingly it's empty, yeah? King e4 is... Uh... It's strange for king e4 to be winning. Yeah? Yes, yes. It's like some triple exclamation mark if... If that's the only move that is winning. Yeah, HD played. That's it. I mean, Liam did not... I mean, he did not know. Nobody was telling him that this this last move was a mistake. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there was already somebody in the chat was mentioning this. Yeah, saying I wish I had a Tadesh of my own. Yeah, it's a very useful thing to have. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, two hundred eighteen <laughs> points plus. Yeah. Or, or much more than that. I think. Yes, I mean, depends what is your rating. Yeah, of, yeah. of course. Yeah, if uh, I, I just thought like uh, as a twenty seven hundred player, then you you shouldn't be jumping over twenty nine hundred, but <clears throat> would not be polite to Magnus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rook D1, King E6. Yeah, I think the new round will start before this game will end, right? Well, honestly, I, I don't think that... Yeah, I mean, if the, the next round starts and this game is still in progress, we just abandon it. Yeah, because yeah I think we abandon it. It's, it's going to be a draw, guys. It's this fun. is a draw, yeah. The, we have seen enough dramas, ups and downs, and also if somebody got, you know, this... Uh, feeling that okay this end game was so interesting and so tense let let me check it out then check out navara courses uh check out uh, the dvoretsky end game manual i mean there is some stunning material there about this end game uh but already look at this shakriya seems to be very determined that okay come on i just lost i have to bounce back they already started their game it's a row that goes in Now we won't be seeing queen c2. We will be seeing maybe queen a4. Or bishop g5, or early bishop g5, h6, bishop h4. He used to play like this. Yeah, that's also, yeah, the gambit. But no, Shakti, I go c, d, e, d, and then what? Bishop f4 or bishop g5? Bishop f4, yeah. This is the, the line Shakti I actually plays quite a lot, and it's a very sharp line. He also played this position with black quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, they're against Rajabov, I believe. Uh, he wants bit Svidla, yeah. Ah, yes, okay. But but that was hardly a game because poor uh, Peter mixed up the move orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he basically, anyway, it's a very tricky line, but poor Peter gave some Queen A4 check and and then he couldn't get out anymore. Yeah, he basically lost the full tempo in a line that were black plays 96 anyway. Yeah, it's just yes. not, not a good thing, yeah. Yeah, so castle is easily bishop f5. I don't really recall this. I mean, usually, yeah, black was going for this uh, super sharp knight e4 stuff. <clears throat> and then knight c6. There was also a game, uh, Mamadjelov against Fabiano Caruana and I from uh, Singfield Cup. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Fabi, he found something different, yeah, something new. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, he, he finds something that I think everybody finds who are now working with supercomputers. But it was really impressive, yeah, that he was blitzing out everything till the very end. And then Shakti, I was complaining that, okay, what to do if your opponent plays so well and is so well prepared? It's a funny thing to complain at the top level, right? I mean, this is what they do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, usually what do you expect? Yeah, if somebody plays the, the Ragozin in on the highest level, then okay, he's absolutely prepared in all these sharp critical lines. No, I always think it's funny when people complain about their opponents actually doing their homework. Yeah, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is what they do. Yeah. This, yeah, but it's so so much more nice when they are shaky. Yeah, I mean, okay, mm -hmm. give me a good line. Yeah, go passive, defend yourself, please, but uh, give me some freedom because I believe that for for super grandmasters, if you let them play chess, then they are just so strong. Yeah, you should never let them uh, this this luxury of, you know, just settled in and he, uh, he they are satisfied and they will just uh, play a wonderful game. Okay, now we are back to some very typical stuff yeah which is considered to be fine for black yeah usually if black gets this um yeah i think there have also been games here yeah. yeah they transpose to something which is mm -hmm. considered to be harmless but bishop e7 immediately there was no reason. black could have played knight d7 first but okay yeah bishop e7 knight d2 I'm expecting knight bd7. Maybe he was hinting at knight a6 sometimes. But I guess now after knight d2, knight a6 will not work anymore yeah? because of a3. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, okay, knight a6, why do we need fancy stuff if we don't have a problem? I mean, usually that's my philosophy, yeah? That if, if I feel that normal play is not good enough, then I look for some extravagant solutions. But if 
everything is fine and okay knight d7 played short mm-hmm. castle played this is totally harmless i remember even that i think radek was uh, putting some pressure with black already in positions like this and even black saved the h6 tempo yeah because there is no knight h4 threat anymore yeah i will learn more about the structures in the next five minutes than in a lifetime before Ah, okay, H6 play that way. Okay, you know all this. Yeah, you are just trolling me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you are the, the Queen's Gambit uh, player, yeah? I remember. It is actually very close to Queen's Gambit with Bishop E7. Uh, yeah, big... only that suddenly even the, the, the beautiful Bishop on F5 disturbs you, yeah? That it's not supposed to be so good. Or this is already some London or exchange... Uh... Exchange Karokan or something like this, yeah, almost. And black goes a5, that's it. By the way, uh, I just realized the chat reminded me there is one topic we cannot ignore. Are you looking forward to the which World topic? Which topic? The the advanced fan fr- the, French from Anish Giri, the football world championship. Ah, football, yeah, but that's uh, starting from next week. Are you looking forward? Oh, well, I mean, for the moment, I'm looking forward to this event and also surviving all the night sessions. And then uh, next week will be a new week. I mean, after all, this is uh, tough, tough for all of us. Yeah, usually we have action all the time till till 2 a.m. And then I have all this adrenaline. I'm not able to sleep till like 4 a.m. I'm not even trying. And like 4.30, I'm going to sleep and then getting up like 1.30, uh, often with some big headache. Yeah, also we have this crazy weather, raining period, then suddenly for one day there is some sun, some hope, then we are back to the rainy period, so it's uh, not an easy week, but it will be nice, of course, when the championship starts. Do you have a team that you habitually root for? No, not anymore. I mean, okay, of course, for Germany, I root automatically, yeah, but uh, this is not like, you know, that, okay, okay, Argentina, I, I'm a big fan of Argentina all the time, yeah, so Argentina, I always like this, uh, like Mexico. I mean, all these exotic teams. Okay, mm-hmm. Argentina is not exotic. Yeah, I'm, Argentina is just a very strong team. But for example, Mexico, I'm rooting for for the African teams. I always mm-hmm. like if there is some uh, surprise team you know, like Ghana in uh, one of the championships. But I always hope that the Ivory uh, Coast uh, team with, with Drogba will be fantastic but they never really succeeded yeah mm-hmm. to achieve what, what what i hoped for yeah uh, ghana and also cameroon yeah was very successful but this was like 30 years ago yeah, <laughs> yeah i think in 94 no 1990 1990 yes exactly mm-hmm. 90 Doja Amila, yeah it was yes uh, yes 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 of course yeah i mean the colombia with valderrama also was was a legendary team uh, of course, Italy, I always like. Yeah, I'm, I'm always looking for it. That's the problem, yeah, that I'm looking for all the teams. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's such a great championship. Okay, I, I'm, I'm enjoying all this, uh, watching all the nations and how much it means to the nation. Yeah, it's, the nations, it's it's always fantastic to see. Yeah, they're always a great spectacle, right? And they get together once in four years to play the World Championship and then once in four years to play the European Championship. Yeah, it's uh, it's always always special. I mean, we do hope that Hungary will sooner or later also qualify. Now, Hungary made incredible a big step forward. Yeah, we are doing very well in all these nations leagues and so on, and uh, we, we are beating very strong teams, which was like unimaginable some uh, some years ago. I mean, uh, Hungary uh, Hungary used to be quite good, like thirty, like ninety. No, like fifty years. Yeah, of course. I mean, in the fifties, we were the best. Yeah, it was like a tragedy mm-hmm. that in fifty four we did not win. Yeah, because we were just the the legendary Pushkash team was uh, basically beating everyone. Uh, but then we lost the final to to Germany three two. I mean, uh, that's that's still a big tragedy for the nation. I I don't think Hungary has uh, ever recovered from this. Honestly, and um, but people are saying that Italy did not qualify for this world championship. Ah, uh, yes, exactly. Now Italy did not qualify. That's true. I mean, this qualification system is terrible. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but it's so. I I just don't know. I mean, okay, Italy should be there. Wild card. I I mean, <laughs> wild card. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, okay, wild card for Italy. It's just one of the strongest teams. 
Oh my God. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I was so angry and I almost felt like I'm going to boycott the championship because Italy is not there, but they understood that. No, no. Okay. That's, that's too much, but it's very sad. How oh, funny. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we have some action also in Magnus's game, right? Maybe we can... Def definitely. Yeah. I wanted to tell you about the advanced French, but actually it wasn't an advanced French. It's, I got fooled. It's a Rostolimo, but I mean, the structure and knowing that Magnus played the the French in the first game, it, yeah, it was, you, huh? yeah, I mean, we, we, we got tricked. So Rosolimo. But this is supposed to be good for White, I believe. What is this? GCF6. Yeah, takes, takes. I mean, usually these positions are quite nice for White. Yeah, like Magnus is inviting Anish, okay. I give you a chance. Show me what you got. And Anish might show. I mean, Anish is very dangerous. He bounced back against Prague. Bishop g5 played. Come on, Anish. Okay. Well, this, uh, Magnus is overdoing things. Yeah, I mean, uh, turning a Rossolimo Sicilian into a, into a French. I'm not, not a fan. I'm not sure that this uh, improved White's chances. I can. I could take Queen e7. No, it's black. Why, why, why take knight with a knight? Ah, you mean because knight takes d5, queen f7, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then knight b6. Well, and then we calculate. Yeah, well, we calculate. I mean, suddenly <laughs> now that we, we talked about the football world championship, it's not so easy to get back to earth. But yeah, queen f7, knight b6 might work, might not, who knows. But but it's there. Okay. All right. So in, in the game, knight g takes e7 mm -hmm. happened, bishop g2, and okay, white stabilized. That's it. Okay, we take it from there. Queen d2, rook a d1, and then and then we win. Do you think it's possible to beat Magnus in this position? Yes. You you have to punish him. I mean, no, no, he shouldn't be playing like this. <laughs> you really have not much respect for French structures. <laughs> No, I mean, okay, it's uh, look, look at this e6, d5, bishop, d7. It's a catastrophe. I understand that the knight on c6 gives you the stability. Yeah, if we remove this knight from c6, you design. I think a lot of people would think that this is a decent enough French. Yeah? No, 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 no. This, this is a catastrophe for black. Yeah, h6. It's not so easy to break, but okay, Anish will. I trust Anish. Anish is bouncing back in this game, and then the big question will be how Magnus is keeping his nerves in the in the fourth game. Um, curious, yes. And I think that's what we all want to see. I mean, I, I want to see Magnus also sweat a bit because... I mean, yesterday he, he just crushed Shakriar and today he also started with 2-0. It looked like match is over and he, he gave some chances for Anish. Go for it. By the way, I'm also not happy what Arjun has done. I mean, this B5 and then weakening the structure. He, he gives Mamed Yalov a chance to bounce back. I mean, this knight on c5, it might another knight land on e5, unless he has some very concrete play. It's uh, not to my liking. But okay. We can we can do the Anish, yeah? Here, knight c4. Knight c4, b3. Takes. Takes. And then bishop takes uh, d3. And then this knight d2, knight, <laughs> knight d2, yes. Yeah, and the knight c4 on the board. So this is the, the trick, yeah? Yeah. But c6 is hanging. On knight d2, but then it's an exchange, yeah? I know, you mean rook d1 and then... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I do see that the evaluation bar says that black is maybe fine, which is a, which is a shock. Wow, okay. In any case, I believe that uh, this got much more messy than it should have. Uh, a very quick update on Prague versus Wesley because we haven't touched this. Ah, you are the soul and the expert of this kind of structures, yeah? Yeah. I think I've had very close to this position. 
I once won with black after Rustem Dauta played f4 against me and I played knight e4. I was very happy. In SN 2001. Yes. Exactly, yes. Yes, I know. This is the legendary classic of this line. Yeah, this is this is what brings all the nightmares to white. Seemingly, you play f4, you, you stop e6, e5. And then Rustam played the move knight e4. I mean, what on earth is this? The point was that after takes, 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 knight f6 came and basically you can explain the rest. Yeah, and then knight e5, rook a4, I won a pawn back and then somehow the game, yeah, this is, this is funny. Yeah, and I think ever since this is a classic, yeah, this is a modern classic. And this you is... were how old? You were like 19 at that point? No, older. I'm, I'm the same year like ah, you. Ah, yeah. yes, yes, of course. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you were already 22. Yeah, but uh, okay, still, it, it showed that you have incredible potential. Yeah, when I saw this, and then I remember your interview in Shah, yeah, that you were saying that, yes, you decided that you will uh, study Queen's Gambit in order to raise your your chess understanding and you have to, as a young player, go for complex structures and so on. It, it was fascinating stuff. I don't remember this. Yeah, this is nice. <laughs> I have all the Shah magazines, you know. I I have all the all these years, you know, it occupies quite a lot of space, but mm -hmm. I'm cherishing them very carefully. You still, you still get them? I still get them and uh, I still care for them you know it's uh, i i have a collection i no longer read chess magazines yeah but still it's nice to have it in your i mean it's it's and often for the photographs yeah it's also beautiful to see some old photographs no no i i understand the fascination and just i feel that there has been enough chess in my life <laughs> yes no i also oh. had always very nice relationship with with shah yeah with dirk poldauf and you know, I, I remember all our interviews and everything. So the Shah is very close to my heart. And now I, I mean, in general, I like chess magazines also. I think New in Chess has been a big part of our life. Exactly. Of course, yeah. I mean, Shah and New in Chess, yeah, these are the two, two magazines that, that I got really close to throughout my career. All right. So this is a long, long, long game. Tiny bit better for white, but uh, very solid. I'm curious to see this uh, Anish Giri against Magnus Carlsen game. Because I trust Anish. I mean, if I don't like predictions, but I tell you Anish will win this game. Okay, we should we should really ask Chad. Chad, do you agree with, with Peter on this evaluation? Do you think Anish will win this position against Magnus? Exactly. Let's let's hear Chad. I mean, Chad knows always everything. We... Let's let's see the the. I mean, don't be influenced by my judgment. Yeah, please tell me yours. Interesting. Anish Anish is getting a lot of love. Yeah, this is unbelievable. Of course, everybody loves Anish. Okay, Anish is 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 fun. Anish is a brilliant player. These chessable courses are brilliant. His videos are brilliant. His tweets. I mean, that's the reason why I'm not joining tweet, yeah, because, I mean, Twitter. Because Anish is so good at, you know, I feel like a total Pacerski. I just can't even imagine uh, competing with him, so I just stay away. That's it. That's my defensive mechanism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> G5 played. You see already Magnus feels the heat. Yeah, you have to play G5. You, you can't tolerate White Knight reaching F4. And what, what is our poll? How is it going? Well, I mean, uh, I, I'm just, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing the YouTube chat and uh, they're all over the place. Very good. That's the spirit. But they're basically, they, they, they trust Anish a lot. But they also trust Magnus. No, that's the problem, probably. Well, they trust Anish in this position a bit more. I mean, if you ask me, I think there is a very slim chance that Anish will win this position. I know. That's why I'm not asking you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I have to ask chat, yeah, because they might support me. I know your opinion. Yeah, and G5 is, is a good move. Yeah, of course. Magnus is Magnus is Magnus. No matter what he does at the start, he when it gets critical, he is very much up to the task to to correct his earlier mistakes. Also, in a way, leading to zero makes it a bit easier for him. He's not under pressure, right? He's just...
yeah, this always helps. Yeah, and on the other hand, puts pressure on Anish. Yeah, that he knows that if he doesn't win, but maybe Anish has already after two zero, he definitely have given up on the match. Yeah, psychologically. That okay, let me just play some good games. Yeah, because it was also the way how he lost the second game hurt him badly. And often when you forget about result, yeah, and then you just start to play for your honor, then you start to show your real potential. Yeah, and th this is what I'm hoping. Paul is 50-50 at the moment. All right, so a lot of Anish and a lot of Magnus fans. So G5. I mean, what should we do with white? Do we go HD? I mean, do we have to stop this G4 or G4 is anyway not something we should worry about? This is a big question. I mean, no, I my feeling that... is that, for example, if I play HD, then I might be able to start transferring my knight with knight C1. Yeah, black has moves like queen F6. Yeah, yeah for example, HD, queen F6, knight C1. But where are you going? Pardon me? Where are you going with this knight? I don't know yet, but, <laughs> but I mean, opening up the rook, I mean, the knight also can't stay on e, e2 forever, yeah? But like bishop e8? Yeah, then I might go knight b3. b6. b6, and now because I protected the pawn, I might be able to jump to e5, but I mean, the, the knight on b3 is not terrible. But also, I don't need to play b6, maybe, eh? because knight c5, I can go knight d4. Yeah. Anish but goes he... knight c1 immediately, yeah. He, I mean, Anish is my boy. He he doesn't care about g4 because then knight e5 is, is good enough. So, okay, very nice. But the knight central c1. pawn is hanging, yeah? All right, but then g4, I mean, things are heating up. But let's 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 give it a, a shot. So, g4. Knight e5. Knight cd4. Yeah, knight cd4. Then, I mean, that was the reason why I... Uh, automatically wanted to stop this, but maybe I'm not. But you want Luxi too. Fifty-one percent think that Anish will not win this game. Oh my God! Don't <laughs> break my heart. Come on, give give some hope, please. Okay, fifty-one percent. I would argue is some hope. Is or is it's already than, something, yeah. It's more than you deserve. <laughs> more than I. Okay, G four, yeah. We we gonna see this. Knight E five. Okay, come on, Anish, show it us. It doesn't work, yeah. Knight F four, Queen Knight D four, Queen F four. Yeah, yeah. I think it's quite nasty. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, of course. This this is what we need. Little nice finessing moves. Threatening Rook D four. Threatening Queen take G four. I mean, what did Magnus then miss? He got overexcited. Yeah, he rushed he can... with g4. But you see, knight c1 had such an effect on Magnus. But maybe he can take on e5 and play like queen g5. Probably he has to, but then knight e2 back, yeah? Then we are coming back. That's why you get all the big bucks, yeah? Yeah, and then this f4 square. Thank you very much. Okay, no, Magnus, especially after he rushed with g4, fell into Anish's trap with knight e5. Body language, let's take a look at body language. Magnus is not happy. And and look at this, when someone like Anish is a little bit moving with his chair, he's very happy. I mean, he's enjoying his situation. Knight takes e5 played, it's not what Magnus wanted. Okay, rook e5 will be blitzed out. Anish in chilling mode. Yeah, Why is he thinking? But d takes e5 would be strange, right? Would be very strange. I mean, usually they, as they say in the, in in the pioneer chess houses, yeah, that they you should just cut your hand immediately. Yeah, the, the, the d5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was it was the typical. Yeah, I mean, okay, you it's clear you have to take the rook. You d5, okay, that's it. You, you have to remember. You will never forgive him for this, right? If he takes to the pawn. Yeah, no, d5, no, then then I'm not sure if I will ever talk to Anish again. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, no, it's uh, no, but it it will never happen. But he's still thinking. Yeah, and you remember when Magnus was thinking against Vesti after 94 that 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 that, that was mm -hmm. terrible because it was clear he might blunder with Queen G6. Mm-hmm. No, no, Anish, just... No, he's enjoying too much. 
Come on, rook e5. I will put it there. Let me play this move. Well, you can play it. I don't know if he can. No, for Anish, give me this. <laughs> rook takes e5. It should be placed there. Don't even think about anything else. Yeah, it's actually interesting. Why is he thinking d5 looks so horrible? Yeah, d5, queen g5. Yeah, and can't play or what? Yeah, it just also just feels terrible. Yeah, so. No, no, it's it's a no go. Anish, come on. <laughs> I mean, don't don't do this to me. I mean, my heart can't stand this. I mean, okay, in this position, you cannot not take with the rook. Or well, Anish is doing this extra. He has uh, he had ten minutes. Yeah, he knows that pit. He can drive me me crazy. So he's just deliberately trolling me. Or maybe he really doesn't want to talk to you ever again. Yeah, that's that's what, yeah, no, but don't do this. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Rook takes e5. No, this I I can't stand this tension. <laughs> this, this, this drives me crazy now. Okay, I'm curious. I mean, I would have lost uh, my house already because I would have told you that there is no way Anish won to recapture with the rook in uh, five seconds. Yeah, I, I would have placed any kind of bed and uh, with any kind of odds. Yeah, I mean, you would be homeless and he wouldn't have a hand. Yeah, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yeah it, it, it would be the worst day ever in history. Yeah, this is... No, 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 no. They still live in the same house? No! Ha, pardon, I mean, sorry, but I just cannot, no, this is, I mean, no, 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 I'm speechless. Okay, we will not take your house, yeah, I feel generous, yeah, we'll leave you your house, but you said on the record you'll never talk to him again. Yeah, no, I don't know, I mean, okay, no, this is not, I, I can't, can't understand anything. I, I'm bro, I'm a broken man, I mean, yeah, I no, just. I can't tell. No, it's no. also just absolutely hor horrendous. Yeah, I mean, all his advantage is gone, all his play is gone. No, I just can't. Uh, I mean, this is the the aura of Magnus. Yeah, I don't know what is going on. No, D takes E five. No, no, no. And just A five. Yeah, no, no. I I I, I almost feel like crying. I mean, okay, no, this drives me crazy. Yeah, no, we should we should cheer you up somehow. Yeah, no, I mean, and Queen G5, of course, and now Magnus will even win this game. I mean, okay, black is now only black can be better. Yeah, no, he'll this? win this very easily. Yeah? <laughs> Just... What is this? I mean, okay, at least he, he from strength he can make draw as, as he pleases. Yeah. Yeah, D5 was not a good move. No. I don't know if uh, if Grandmaster Navarro had some course on Chess24 about positional understanding, that would be kind of a place for, for Anish to check out. No, it's, uh, I mean, he's such an incredible strategical player. Yeah, with all these finesses, with, uh, I mean, the, this is somehow Magnus's effect. Yeah, this is, the, 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 otherwise against no one else or under not any circumstances, Anish would have ever played like this. Yeah, Ruxi 2, he'll be crushed. I mean, he will be crushed in few moves. Knight H4, I don't know, will be made. It's finished. Yeah, yeah knight like... h4 gh look f f takes f2 and checkmate is coming. Yeah, it looks like like some sort of checkmate yeah i mean okay just just to highlight yeah because okay i mean this is absolutely insane checkmate i'm not sure that this is a forcing sequence no but... <laughs> of course it's not a for i mean just to to show that what kind i mean why we are not a believer of what anish is doing I mean, basically, okay, knight h4, and it's uh, it's over, yeah. I can't believe this. That's why you can't play anti-positional move. Yeah, the computer actually showed that after d5, uh, I mean, at least this engine was still saying that it's kind of fine for, but you just never take d takes e5. Can I go rook takes f2 here? Yeah, you can probably also do this. I mean, you 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 can knight do G3, whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. Yeah, you also played knight g three. Uh, yeah, knight g is the same stuff like knight h four. Yeah, and and then rook f f two. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Yeah, he's also controlling e two, so that there is no knight e two at any moment. Like a b and then knight e two, some desperado. Yeah. No. It's... No, that is that is it. That's three zero. 
I mean, but look at this. It was move 21, knight takes e5. Yeah, move, move rook takes e5, and it would have been a terrible torture. And and who knows? And in five moves, gets checkmated from this. It's, it's exactly like that Grunfeld. Yeah, he lost that position too in five moves. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, but this is no. No, something is. I mean, probably these two losses affected. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Well, we'll have you on the record. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the. I mean, I was completely sure that it will never happen. Yeah. So I can tell whatever I want. But <laughs> I mean, okay. This is. I, I love Anish. I mean, I love his chess and everything because he's usually doing the right things. And, and then D takes E5. No. No, it's tragic. Yeah. Yeah, and there you see, yeah, the fifty-one percent. Yeah, I mean, fifty-one percent. Yeah. Also, the chat is uh, is very sorry for you being homeless and all now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, okay. This is I. I lost my fear. I lost everything. It's, this is in humanity. I mean, of course, d d d you can't play D takes E five. By the way, we are also missing on our on other action, but yeah, for the moment, yeah, till this game ends, we will stay here. This is such an incredible turnaround. Wow. I mean, Magnus yeah. gave... I mean, Anish also can't say that Magnus then in the third game was just so super solid and so professional. No, actually, he gave a fair chance for Anish to play a great game. And then this happened. Yeah. But now, I mean, there is no drama left. Yeah, I mean, we all know what's going to happen now. Yeah, it's just... And and now poor Anish is thinking. I mean, no, no, it's uh, it's entirely too late for that. It's too late, yeah. It's time to throw in the towel. I mean, that's it. Wow. I wanted to see Magnus sweat. Yeah, I mean, the, it it will be three zero again. This shouldn't be tolerated. I mean, somehow the players should, you know pull themselves together. I mean, Magnus is just massacring everyone. Well, I mean, he was never trying to win the second game in that Grunfeld ending. Yes. And uh, he was never winning this one. Yeah, so somehow his opponents are making it too easy for him. Yeah, just... yeah, yeah, that's why I said, yeah, he's aura already, yeah, because he settled in and he's in this winning streak, yeah, that he, no matter what he does, he's just crushing the opponents or, or beating them. And and the only way to fight against this is that you have to gather all your and and forget against whom you are playing, and uh, and fight for your honor because just like this it does not work. Yeah, now you have to maybe also bring in Fabi and Ding Lir and and Ali Reza. Did yeah, they Levon, Levon also. Fight? Yeah, Levon is. Usually losing to, to Magnus, but always in an incredible fight. Yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. he he doesn't believe in Magnus. I mean, uh, he he puts up an incredible resistance. Did they not qualify all these people that I mentioned? Yeah, well, I mean, no. The point is that uh, I think Levon played also very few events. Yeah, and then it was impossible to qualify. I think Fabi didn't play at all. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. Ali Reza also only played once in. Uh, in in Miami with the uh, okay, one. no, I understand because all these people they had candidate to candidates exactly right? Fida Grand Prix at the beginning, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so they couldn't start from the beginning, yeah. But at the same time, this gave the, the chance for the tour to to have a completely new profile, yeah. And uh, they were giving incredible chances for the young players, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and they are really using the chance. And uh yeah, that's uh that's the standing. Now that's nice. That's the tour standing, yeah. So basically, I believe that the the young players has profited so much from the tour, yeah. And I'm very grateful for the tour giving the these young players. Also for Vincent, I know it meant so much, yeah. And he also played extremely well in the events he played. So so really great. Yeah, and and Anish is in a total shock now, down to one minute twenty. But it's time to resign. 
yeah, him now thinking is no longer, it's no longer chess. Yeah, he's just kind of being hard on himself. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That how could this happen mm -hmm. in in a dream situation? Within five moves to lose a dream position, it's it's terrible feeling. That's it. And also the position looks so horrible that I, I feel like moving from here, but at, at the same time, okay, I, I believe he will resign and we don't shouldn't lose that moment. Yeah, there is not a single chest line that one can calculate. Yeah, the next move is look FF2 and there is no way you can survive. For example, okay, F take G3, look FF2. The bishop has to hide already in the corner and then the queen moves to h5, or I, I don't know. I mean, everything is. Yeah, I mean, there, but... there is also this look f1, probably checkmate. Look f1, queen is there. I'm, yeah. I'm always apologizing for missing checkmates, but when it's already a completely winning position, it's uh, I, I lose the, the concentration. Yeah, so a takes b5, look f8 to f2, and there is no way to get away. Yeah, 92. Yeah, this knight e2 is the reason why maybe knight g3 is stronger than knight h4, yeah? It's just more clinical. Yes, yes. To control this. And okay, now every single move is a complete win. Magnus has to make up. Does he play for the galleries? Or, for example, he can also just take on e2 and then being pawn up and with a winning attack. But uh, he might be looking for some beautiful mate. I think knight takes e2 will be made, but I don't see it yet, but also... Yeah, it's so hard even to, to calculate, yeah, because everything wins and... Exactly, yeah, in a position yeah. where absolutely everything wins, why would you need to calculate? Yeah. Yes. Um, knight takes e2, king f2, knight f4 check, maybe? Yeah, looks also very promising. Okay, king f1, yeah. Knight takes g2. Ah, knight takes e2 check is made in nine already, but... I mean, this isn't uh, that kind of mate in nine like yesterday, so I'm not sure that then you really want to go for it with black or you just play simple. Hmm. All right, so we, we should decide or ask chat, should we stay here or should we move? Yeah, Magnus goes, look at e2. I, I like this, look at e2. I mean, basically, you signal your opponent, you are completely lost, and he might just design because it's uh, pointless to keep on playing. Knight takes e2 check. I mean, knight f4 and, and all these checkmates mm -hmm. are coming. <laughs> Magnus looks even. He mates on the first rank, yeah? Nah, he's being very, very clinical. Uh, yeah. But okay, now at least Anish can still make well, some more moves. C1, no? just... Ah, just like this. Okay, yeah. Okay. He's also two points up, to be fair. Huh? Exactly, yeah. That that that's why there was no drama here. Yeah, there was there was zero drama. Yeah? You either made by force or you made slowly. And that's it. Anish designs. Yeah, wow. This is this is shocking development. Okay, let's quickly catch up on, on action. For example, Liam against Duda is some razor sharp position. We are seeing Liam actually going for some terrible attack on, on G7. Black has this dark sweat bishop, but was not able to because the queen came from D6. Yeah, so it was pinned. Wow, so far it was two draws, yeah. So in fact, if Liam would win this, then he would get the lead. Yeah, knight takes d4, f6, yeah. Black had to stop white from going f6, probably. And look at the evolution bar. Why is that? Why is computer thinking that this is so completely over? Could be multiple reasons. Could be like queen h4, ed, rook g3. Yeah, there are so many. I mean, also, eventually the bishop can reach this uh, a to g8 diagonal, mm -hmm. it's checkmate, or rook g3, rook h3, and then it's checkmate. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's a total, total collapse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything is good. Do they need a lot of trouble? And yeah, just as you said, yeah, you highlighted that uh, Liam will be very tough opponent for Duda today. Duda will be in a must-win situation to, to bounce back if. And what? Liam has 11 and a half minutes? Yeah, he has time. <laughs> oh. Okay, yeah. basically it means that he also got some preparation in yeah, and he knew the position very well. Yeah. Uh, and, this is actually and Wesley has beaten Plug with Black. Mm -hmm. Wow, in your system. In your system. And what about Arjun? Okay, because Liam has a lot of time, he's probably thinking. Arjun is doing fine according to the computer. Is it humanly awesome? We, we see again this night on B4 like Duda yesterday, but mm -hmm. it's a different story now. What is this? A difficult position to think about, yeah? Maybe like Yeah, it's so confusing, yeah? This... I mean, the, the knight on b4 is protected by the bishop on d6. Pawn on e3 protects the d4 pawn. And I fc... Go king h7, yeah? Just get out of checks and, and ask white for a move. And d5 was not hanging because of rook e2 and knight takes d4, knight yeah? D4, yeah? I thought my king h7 was so clever. Yeah, wow, yeah. The, the, the rook on b2 was extremely important. Yeah, king f2. You might have to come back with rook b2, yeah? But then rook ch check, knight takes d5 might be possible or... No, bishop mm -hmm. d3. I mean, it feels like you the rook on b2 is so perfect, yeah? Ah, hang on. Maybe they already repeated a couple of times. Because oh, yes. rook a2, knight b4, yeah, it's draw. Actually... Uh, because Anish, uh, not Anish, Arjun is actually leading, right? In the leading match. the match, yeah. On the other hand, okay, yeah, it was it was maybe a chance, but uh, but understandable, yeah. He's mm -hmm. now leading the match. He definitely already guaranteed one point, yeah, no matter what, yeah, even if he loses the fourth game and then there is a blitz play of which he loses. So there is a comfort and then out of, we, we, we see that his confidence is back. He plays mm -hmm. excellent chess. That's the Arjun we know and we, whom we love to see. Excellent. So back to Duda. Liam against Duda. Will it be checkmate? So what happened? Queen h6 happened. ED, Rook gc, and g5. Duda, brilliant stuff. What a defense. I didn't want to go to h6. You see, I wanted to stay somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Safe. I mean, just, just to highlight, yeah, that your instinct was Queen h4, E takes d4, mm -hmm. and then Rook g3. And then black will always be stuck with the pawn on g7. But what an incredible, stunning resource. Queen h6 takes, rook g3, and using the ampassan rule that you can only take ampassan at this moment. But the queen is hanging. So you won't be able. And then, okay, black might have some chances because pawn on e4 is also vulnerable. Okay, so normally queen h5 now. Yeah, but it's already a game. I mean, I feel like there is there is intrigue here. I mean, there is already some intrigue. Okay, we understand that white is better, but it's not not an automatic uh, massacre. Ah, like because before. rook c seven, yeah. Ah, defending like this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rook I mean, seven. also the the structure gives uh, some some potential for black. No, no, this this will be super exciting. G5. Yeah, rook c7, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, this is... And this is now called shower, yeah, it's a total shock, yeah, it's, it's a game changer, yeah, it looked like it's going to be checkmate automatically, yeah, probably. Liam was already, yeah, I'm going to go rook dg1, rook h3, and it's checkmate. And all of a sudden, black got life. It's a lot of praise for one move, yeah? Yeah, it's I mean, a shocker, okay. Shocker, a game changer, it, a cold shower. <laughs> and then you look at the opponent, yeah? But here, unfortunately, they are not face-to-face. -face. But if you can play G5 over the board, I think that the, the opponent is getting a hard attack, yeah? Because certainly White missed it. Queen H5. Rook C7 was the move that you... 
claimed, mm-hmm. yeah, very clear. And then hook H7 shifting. Maybe I can go rook C7 E5. Yeah, rook H7. Anyway, we continue. Queen, yeah, the queen spirit. G6. Ah, queen G6. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, I actually don't want to let this e5 happen, but but how can we control everything, yeah? No, I don't think you can control everything. Maybe this is as good as it gets. You go rook c7 and then you lose the pawn somewhere and then you try to survive. Yeah, yeah, but I already wanted to... Yeah, rook c7 played. Do the down to a minute, but he still always finds the best moves. I mean, the moves that practically pose open and problems yeah because uh, computer moves are not always objective i mean objective maybe they are best but practically speaking it's a whole different world uh, rook h3 insisting on giving checkmate so he did stop rook h7 but he abandoned the idea of e4 e5 well he forces queen g7 queen g7 right? yeah okay let's let's go for it on the board and probably just rook takes d4, yeah. Okay, but that gives us some time. Rook d4, then how do we cement? Rook e7 or rook e8? Rook e8 is a little bit loose, but maybe we can do it. Or maybe just go rook e7. Okay, yeah, e5 I played. E5, All right, yeah, this is this is in the spirit, but... I mean, it's a little bit strange, yeah, that you combine e5 with rook h3. But also, it's possibly just still very, very bad for black. Yeah, it could. Yeah, this no, this e five is the is the key move. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, we survived the the checkmate, but we we might not survive the game. Uh, you know, checkmate is a, such a thing. Yeah, sometimes you survive it today, but you still get checkmated later. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is when uh, people told me, but you you never win a chess game with with a checkmate. Well, because my opponent resigns, yeah. Otherwise, I would keep my phones at the end, and uh, I would still be able to deliver a checkmate myself. Yeah. Now this is the funniest thing. Yeah, it's just checkmate is um, is embedded in the rules of chess. It is the actual goal of the game to checkmate your opponent, right? Well, yeah. I but I have never thought like this about chess. Yeah, it's uh, for me chess is about finesses. Yeah, not not checkmates. Ah, uh, okay. Now that's how I teach my students. I I get you know a grandmaster class online and I remind them you know checkmate is the goal of the game. We play for checkmate. Let's train this. You know, and then we start training. Ah, uh -huh. well, no, my my students you know learn the finesses. Yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> how to squeeze the opponent and then okay. <laughs> After the mate will come or not, the designation comes. That's what matters. You see, we created alternative schools of, of chess. Yes, yes. But but that's why it was always so interesting to, to work with each other, yeah, because we had different styles and the moves that I have seen you you might have ignored, and the moves I have ignored, you have always seen. Yeah, it was it was a very is, nice combo. That is that is true, yeah. That is I think true. this is always very nice, yeah, because if two players work exactly the same way yeah then they are also missing a lot of fun yeah because uh, somehow you limit yourself to your way of thinking rook g1 rook g1 uh, fe5 and and now computer goes wild rook, I mean, rook g1 the computer was very unhappy about rook g1 yeah for some reason i was trying to understand rook c1 but then queen d5 check uh -huh. Uh, rook but, c5, okay, but uh, with 10 seconds on the clock, 2 seconds on the clock, Duda couldn't go for rook c5. fe5 played. Yeah, apparently here after rook g1, there was this big rescue with rook c5, but okay, with 2 seconds on the clock, I don't think that we can fault Duda. f takes e5 played, and now the question is, where is the killer blow because black is counting on rook c1 trade-off it does look like your territory it should be checkmate somehow yeah it's true yeah it does look like my territory uh f6 yeah f6 queen g6 queen d5 check rook f7 
and then maybe rook g3 just or like also, this yeah Sy systematic also, yeah also yeah. queen takes e5 maybe yeah yeah no okay it, it looks like checkmate yeah I mean, the, the checkmate is coming. But once again, my commentary with you is so different to my commentary with other people. Um, it's like with other people, I feel like I'm just, you know, chilling. And with you, I feel like I'm a part of a very intense work on chess, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is your line. Yeah, the F6, Queen G6, Queen D5, Rook F7, Queen takes E5. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the Rook F6. Wow, what is this? So rook well, g5 check check and white hides on g3. Yes. Wow, I mean it's very good for, for Liam actually that he has so much time on the clock. Yeah, so he will he won't get lost in complications. Yeah, but I simply feel like you know, if we get the excitement, then it's also so much more fun and and okay, I also want to give the people the chance to to feel how the players are feeling, yeah, because the, this chess chess game, I think, is heavily underestimated. Yeah, there are so many emotions, uh, so much concentration involved. So if we if we don't give all this back to the people, then they might be fooled. Like chess is an easy game. No, that that I think is not usually assumed. Yeah, chess is not an easy game. <laughs> that's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Wow, queen f six. Yeah, that's the problem. It's a pin, and. It's game for for Liam, and he takes the lead. 2-1. Jan Shishtov Duda in a must-win situation to, to tie the match, which already also guarantees Magnus the first place today, because no matter what, and okay, Liam should be very happy with himself. It was a fantastic game. I think we should use the chance to have a quick quick break to, to recharge for the last and mm -hmm. very important round, because, for example, here, Duda will... Go all in, of course, in the next game to try to tie the match. Pragnanda has lost with the white pieces. It will be very tough to fight back with black against Wesley. How do you create winning chances? And uh, and okay, Shakri Amamadyarov needs to go all in with the black pieces against Arjun Arigaishi to try to bounce back and equalize the match. So a lot of action. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. I think uh, we, we can call a short break and then we will be back soon. Mm -hmm. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. Hi there, it's me, John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented Aim Chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not, that's because you're not using Aim Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com or Chess account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> Now I know! Thanks, Aim Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good! Hi, it's me, that guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, sick. 
luscious hair. Intuition Builder. All this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improved their ratings 43% faster than average? What? So what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess. Sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a Queen's Gambit. <laughs> that's so fucking dumb. Aim Chess. For when you aim to chess. That's their slogan. It's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another. It's... But it, just sign up for aim, chess, okay? Just... Come on. Literally, why not? Alright, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go. Alright? Jesus Christ. Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Pragyananda. Do you want to use my games to improve your chess? Now you can do. We have handpicked 50 puzzles from my games played in Champions Chess Suit this season. I win Bishop C5, D4 and Queen E4. Yeah, another crucial win for the qualifications to top eight. You can download it for free just by going to chess24.com slash puzzle pack. Enjoy solving. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Hello everybody, I am Grandmaster David Antongi Harro. I'm Magnus Carlsen. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top Grandmaster. I'm Grandmaster Nils Grandelius from Sweden. I am Grandmaster Hari Krishna Pendala from India. And we are back. Well, I'm trying to calm myself down. I have tried to, to forget what we have witnessed in the previous round. Magnus has already won the match against Anish Giri, 3-0. We have witnessed this shocking moment. Anish getting the chance there with recapturing with the look on E5, but, but D takes E5 happened. I mean, something that my body just couldn't handle at all. But uh, okay, th th that's life. It happens. The and... And Duda has lost to, to Liam. And this will be our game of the round. We will be focusing mainly on Duda because it's very important that uh, Duda needs to win to keep pace with Magnus. Uh, he can get it to the Blitz playoff. Rustam, I mean, tell me how you are handling the situation. I was just wondering, yeah? Magnus won like seven games in a row? Uh, yeah, because he, he won yesterday, three, two days, three, that's six. And uh... I think he beat Arjun in the final game of the match. Yeah, I mean, so okay. it was, I think win, draw, win, or something like this. Seven out of seven, yeah. Yeah, in, in any case, I mean, one has the feeling that Magnus in a very good spirit, yeah, somehow. He was also yesterday saying that it's very nice that he gets a chance to go outside while the sun is still shining, San Francisco. <laughs> Uh, the, the players are starting, I believe, at 12 o'clock, yeah, uh, San Francisco time, because we, we start at 9 Central European, there is a 9-hour time difference. It's kind of interesting, yeah, for example, for me, starting at 12 would be very early. What is your take? I know you are a breakfast guy. Oh, I am, I am so much a breakfast guy, you cannot imagine. Like, for me, every day starts with a breakfast. Also, I don't care when I get up, it starts with a breakfast, with a big breakfast. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes I have this flight, you know, sometimes you have like an awful flight at like six in the morning. And then I get up at like 3.30, I have a breakfast, you know, and then I... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, if, if if I have to get up at six, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, if, if something has to happen at six, then usually I, from the shock effect, I can't go to sleep before three at all, yeah? Because mm -hmm. only when I'm dying, then I can fall asleep, yeah? Uh, but uh, my breakfast, the last 
for, for I think two months, I haven't had breakfast before 1 p.m. 1 p.m. was my earliest breakfast in the last two months. I, I just, with this illness and everything, I mean, I was just, uh, I mean, a completely different uh, planet. But I, I am a very special chess player like this. Sometimes, you know, when we play at like one, I have breakfast and lunch. Yeah, usually, usually this happens to me as well. Yeah, that like 1.30 p.m. I'm having breakfast with my, my wife telling me, but but don't eat too much because soon we'll be lunch. Yeah, <laughs> okay, like, like 40 minutes later, we already have lunch, but I had my rice drink and, and something, some blueberries. Yeah, my breakfast is always light. And we do see that Arjun has already pushed his pawn to e4. The game has not yet started. And Shakriya goes e4, g6. Inspired by Magnus. D4, Bishop, G7. Now, very interesting to see. Okay, Arjun sticks to his the same setup that he chose against Magnus. Knight FC, D6, Bishop, C4 was, was that game. Yeah, the very first game of the, of the finals. Yeah, it's one of the quickest ways to lose a game in chess. Yeah, when you go D6, Bishop, C4, Knight, D7, it's... Yeah, it's let's just show this. Yeah, that... Knight, Magnus, of course, played the move knight c6, mm -hmm. but yeah, knight d7, bishop takes 7, check, king f7, knight g5, check, king e8, knight e6, goodbye, that's it. And wow, Shakriya plays knight f6 and gives Arjun the chance to get his dream set up. Yeah, this bishop c4, knight f6, queen e2, I think this is lovely. Magnus in this regard was very smart with knight c6, he just showed that Magnus always knows what, what he's up to. Yeah, knight c6. A little too late. Ah, but h3, then now black can still play e5. Uh, probably Arjun thinks that this structure which they got in that game is very, very safe. Yeah, yeah it suits him perfectly. Yeah. That explains. h3, e5. d takes e5, d takes e5. I mean, d takes e5, d takes e5 is clearly connected to the match situation, I believe. Otherwise, uh, usually black would have preferred to take with the knight. Play these knights and it's more solid, but now for Shakriar, being solid doesn't really help. He needs to keep as much pieces as possible alive. Yeah, Ricky, as far as I can see, both knights are pretty bad. Yeah, Knight on c6 is bad after c3, but also knight on f3 is not perfect after knight h5 somewhere. So... It's not 100% obvious to me, even objectively. Yeah, but okay, this is a very solid position we will keep an eye on. Uh, we started out with, with the Duda game, but before we get there, let's take a look how Prague is trying to react to Wesley's Quincy 2 Nimzo. I mean, of course, Quincy 2 Nimzo is one of the toughest lines to, to play for a win against because all kinds of forced lines are possible. Castle is E4 and Prague goes for for the sideline with d6, yeah, he's provoking a tough fight because d5 is super drawish. So Prague goes d6 and now after e5, d takes e5, d takes e5, knight g4, knight fc, knight c6. We do see a line which I think, like, it has a bad reputation for black, but it's complex. Bishop f4, knight d4, blitzed out. Can you really say it has a bad reputation if it is known to like five people in the world? No, but I, I remember I analyzed it like in 2009, 2010. Yeah, because I was also looking for some fighting options against this E4. It was always my repertoire with black and I could never make it work. But I don't know if it's really theory or just that I analyze you. You might be right. It might be still hidden. Yeah, knight d4. On the other hand, Prague is quite impressive in a sense that despite his uh, very young age, he, is, he has alternatives. Yeah, that uh, this is quite impressive because otherwise it's not like uh, Wesley played queen c2 e4 and then Prague was thinking for quite some time and then came up with something. He, he had it in his pocket. Of course, very, very difficult to generate winning chances against somebody like Wesley. Yeah, as fast as. By the way, Tadeas is uh, revealing the, the secret. Yeah, that plenty of games in this line, so perhaps not so much a secret. Yeah, it was secret 12 years ago or 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah Queen D2. 
As I would say, it's ironic that they're revealing a secret that it's not a big secret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so what is it? C5. What matters that it's a fight? On the other hand, uh, yeah, we see the computer does not believe in Black's position. Well, the the big question mean? will be like a long castle. I think some moves like long castle come well, to my mind. H, H3. Can I go H3 with white to clarify? You want to clarify, yeah? Okay, but what do you clarify exactly? I mean, if I trade everything, then then that's... Well, if you take on f3 and take on d2, I want to take with the king. Yes, I have and... to go knight h6, yeah. And after knight h6, I just want to, you know, take and play f4 and king e3 and ask... I mean, basically, I... you, you called it, yeah? You want to clarify things and you mm -hmm. clarified, yeah? So f4 and then king e3 and the bishop on b4 is out of the game. Oh, it's just I want. I just want to make a draw. Yeah, no, just yeah. It's it's very solid, of course. Yeah, it's very solid. This would be kind of also unpleasant to face. Yeah. Also, I don't see what black could possibly do instead after h three. That's true. That's true. Okay, so we have seen it. Wow, and the hc played. Wesley, of course. Yeah, he's super solid. No, with with black against Wesley, yeah, and and I think what what hurt Prague the most that he lost against this super solid uh, Queen's Gambit line. Yeah, usually black plays this to to hold the game, and then winning that game with black. Well, white white usually loses this position by over over pushing over, over pushing. Yeah. yeah, so that's what must have happened to him. Yeah, exactly. And then it's so difficult because you know exactly that, okay, Wesley knows all kinds of terror. I mean, he could have played Catalan, he could have played uh, any Nimzos, I mean, some stable Nimzos, of course. He opted for Queen C2, but he could have also played third move, Knight FC, D5, Knight CC, and then go for some forced lines. I mean, those are all the things you have to deal with before the before the game, yeah? yeah that's why, for example, Shakri, I opted for E4, G6, just get out of so-called mainstream theory, but there is also so much theory there. Nowhere to hide. It's basically uh, a situation with no good solutions. It's just not a good situation to be in. Yeah? If you need to be the top player with black, then okay. You already messed up something. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you might get a chance to be the top player if he needs to win, yeah, and then he's willing to take more risk and he doesn't play his objective perfect chess whatsoever, yeah, but once he is in this comfortable situation, it's it's tough. So yeah, HD Prague has to think how to deal with it. And what about Duda? Because Duda opted for the Trompovsky and for a very speculative line. Uh, and the, the problem is I would be quite euphoric of this choice. However, Liam is blitzing things out, yeah, which indicates that he is very familiar with all this. Bishop g5, d5, knight d2. C5, D takes C5, E6. Yeah, there, there was some development uh, four or five years ago, or maybe even more. E4. Such, such a fantastic French for black, right? Bishop takes C5. Yeah, because there was this famous uh, Nepo Vesli saw game from Vikan Ze or something. I'm, I'm recalling when this <clears throat> E4 happened. <clears throat> yeah, well, and when Black won in like 10 moves, yeah? Well, yeah, exactly. That's something uh, Jan mixed up something in his preparation mm -hmm. and, uh, <clears throat> and and lost on the spot. But I think Bishop takes e5 wasn't played. Bishop takes e5 is computer's top choice. e5, queen, b6, yeah, leading to this very double h position, hitting on f2 pawn. Queen e2, knight fd7, knight bc, knight c6, knight takes c5 on the board. Yeah, I didn't understand this. I expected knight f3. After knight c5, black can collect, no? Queen takes b2. And then knight b3, knight d4, or what? Oh, I just didn't see that the knight can go back, yeah? But you're probably right, knight d4. Well, I mean, I trust Duda, but you might still have something. I don't know. Knight d4, knight takes d4, queen a1, queen... Ah, but just just before I forget here, Talias is mentioning that 
Liam actually played this line already with Black against Fedosiev in 2019, where Fedosiev opted for e takes f6 after mm-hmm. queen b6. Yeah, so e takes f6, bishop takes f2 check uh, was already played in that game, which means that, yeah, Liam is very much into all these uh, details here. So queen e2, knight fd7, and he just recaptured with the knight. No, pardon me, knight takes c5, and long castle on the board. What what a strange French, yeah, that uh, black actually lost the dark square bishop, which usually is, is a terrible thing, but he is so many tempis up and, and these knights are very well placed. Bishop d7. Yeah, I mean, black could also just go rook c8, knight a4, rook c8, knight e4, and just sort of deliver checkmate, yeah, before white finishes development. Yeah, that, that's the problem, yeah, that the, these pieces are not yet... Not yet developed. Well, as I say, they should have joined the party, but it seems to me they were not invited. Yeah, they weren't invited <laughs> at all. Yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah, bishop d7. Also, the, the point being that if black played prematurely knight a4, then white also has queen b5 option, which probably you, you don't want to give. Yeah, so bishop d7, developing, sensible. And the problem is that there are so many pieces that white needs to develop that it's a, it's a terrible feeling. Because feeling-wise, yeah. you would need bishop e3, f4, knight fc, and then you are even claiming clear advantage. But none of this move works because bishop e3 runs into d4. That's the that's the big problem. Yeah, no, I think white needs to develop the knight at least. Yeah, I course. mean, just to, just to show the trick, yeah, that if takes, takes, then finally knight b3 collects the rook and wins the game. So how to, what was your suggestion? Just knight f3, yeah. Just knight f3, yeah. You got to develop the horsey because otherwise the horsey will get quite sad on g1. Yes, yes. And also eventually maybe Stratton with bishop e3, but hang on. Now, for example, already, no, knight a4, queen b5 might still work. Just to show what, what I was suddenly thinking of, that queen b5, and after queen takes b5, bishop b5, knight takes e5, I have bishop takes a4. Yeah, that was kind of important. And black might lose material. So, okay, it's it's a tough, tough position. Hang on, there is some very quick development in Arjun against Shakriar. I mean, at least Shakri, I got a game. He got a game, yeah. He could also claim he got a good position. He, he got a game. I mean, it might be just... I mean, some, some chances. Yeah, the e5 pawn is weak. Yeah, one can argue that Black's king is slightly vulnerable, but uh, it would be vulnerable if white would have rook on f1 and the rook on a1 would be on d1. But with, with these rooks on uh, so misplaced... What happened here? Yeah, so castles, castle, rook d1. This is knight c3, h6, knight d5. Yeah, so we keep on seeing this strategy that people try to trade everything when when they are leading the match with white. Takes this bishop f4, rook e8, e5, c6, and g5. Yeah, and that's how Shakriya created this mess. Yeah, takes, takes f4, takes, takes. So, okay, something to play with at least for uh, Mamad Yarov. We, we don't know how much. And uh, Prague is playing very interestingly. I mean, he opted for the same line we discussed. So, HD takes, takes, takes on D2. King D2, look D8 check included. Yeah, of course, this is very clever because after King C2, at least he has this look D4 bothering the bishop. All right. Plug is trying to complicate matters. And why it needs to, to try to trap that, that rook, yeah? A G, rook f4. How do I trap it best? Ah, oh, you want to trap it, yeah? Well, I want to at least to cause annoyance, yeah? Mm-hmm. If I go rook h3. So, but you are not setting anything yet, yeah? 
Yeah, maybe rook h3 is just stupid. Yeah, maybe I should just go rook d1. Yeah, uh, yeah, this rook d1 is very clever because you stop the development of the bishop. So I have to retreat with the rook. Yeah, rook d4 yeah. probably. And then I take take knight b5. Bishop d7. But now finally at least the bishop is alive. Yeah. Bishop d7, bishop d3. I mean, I'm not winning with white, but I also think that my position is probably very, very safe. Yeah, it is safe, yeah. But but it's a tough call for Wesley. Yeah? He knows that actually winning the match, he only needs a draw, but uh, he he might also feel that he's simply better and he might be tempted to, to try to punish Black's play. I mean, you also have knight e4, you have bishop retreat and then... But no, well, knight e4 is knight takes f2, you yeah? know? Ah yes, yes. This is the exactly. I have, I have seen it before, and then I forgot about it. And the point being that if White plays Bishop G C, then Black can play Knight A six, and the Knight is coming to F five. It's a different story. Yeah, positionally, I was wondering maybe Bishop E three is the best move in the position, but it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, it's it's a move. Yeah, and yeah, Knight, knight E three, F E, yeah. and then Keep the structure. Yes. Maybe it will happen. Yeah, who knows? I mean, it's solid enough for white. Yeah. Yeah, and then f4, bishop g2, rook d1. It is really solid. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, Wesley taking his time. He is. He has enough. Yeah, I mean, this is an end game already. Very important to make the right choice here. If if he makes the right choice, then time won't be an issue. Okay, let him work out the details. By the way, there is also a strange move like knight e2, but it looks so strange that I didn't did not even want to to mention because you can take on c4, take on f4, and take on e5. That just That's just to show points, for our yeah. audience, yeah, that why we don't like knight e2. You can even take you checking bc, then you take. Take and you take and exactly this is what you don't want to give your opponent who, who needs to win. All right. Okay. So what about Shakriar? He's he's activating his pieces. Are you worried a bit or you think that Arjun is having things under control? I know Rook F3, I'm not worried for white yet. Not rook f3, yet, rook yeah. f1, and um, and uh, I, I think black's king is uh, vulnerable enough for white to have counterplay. Yeah, rook f3 is, is very nice, yeah, because but rook g3 is not yet a step, then I can sacrifice my queen maybe. I just want to go rook f1 yeah. next, yeah, that's, that's all yeah. I want. Yeah, fair enough. It should be fine. And what about the other game? Jan Shishtov Duda needs to win. At all cost, and it gets. I mean, at least he got the knight out. The knight out. The bishop retreated to e3, and nothing happened directly to him. So there is this d4 square that we might be able to use. What Maybe. what happened here? So knight f3, Queen. black played rook c8, mm -hmm. bishop e3, very nice. Yeah, this bishop had to retreat. Castles and king b1. Okay, so slowly it reminds me of some French. Yeah, maybe queen d2, or queen e1. Because we, we can't go knight c4 because the bishop on d7 is hanging, yeah. Can we go bishop b5? Could that be a move? Could definitely be a move, yeah. Because yeah, once once you of course queen on e2 is is horrible, but yeah, that's the point that it still covers the b5 square. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tough, but also very important moment. I feel like if white plays very precisely and queen e1 plays, I'm I'm not liking it, yeah, because bishop b5 seems to solve black's problems. I don't know how, maybe with some artificial play and some computer play, it was possible to keep the tension in the position. Now, Queen E1, Bishop B5. By the way, Arjun played your Rook F3. So the pupil follows the master. I think he'll be fine. 
And here yeah, after yeah. bishop b5, maybe just take on b5, queen b5, knight d4. Okay, queen a6. Yeah, I no, I mean, I need to go b3, but then your knight will come to jumping to e4, yeah? which to is e4, probably... yeah. And then the other guy goes back to c6. Yeah, this is this is a good French. This yeah, is... it's somehow too easy, yeah? for mm -hmm. That's what I'm worried for, for Duda, that Actually, after queen e1, bishop b5, things might get practically very easy for black. What about uh, the end game? Is there a chance in the end game? With queen b4, yeah. Mm -hmm. Takes, takes, takes. Rook hf1. Okay, we jump knight c4. Bishop d4. Bishop d4, yeah. Okay, yeah, if you can kick me with beastly king b2, then you might have some chances, yeah? So knight e4, but still yeah. beastly. Knight e4, it's a, it's a very strong knight, yeah? Yeah, you can't you can't really play. Yeah, c2 is hanging, pardon me. So beastly knight is the check is at least complex. Ah, it seems like very good for black. The knight takes c2, bishop b6, knight b4, so I'm... Yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely counterplay. Yeah, not the difficult. Uh, and Bishop b5 is a very good move. Yeah, Bishop b5, but maybe this is the best what white has. I, I mean, because without the trade of queens, uh, there is even the risk of black getting free attack. Yeah, there is, I mean, usually white already pushed h4, h5, something is happening against black's king, but this is very far away. Yeah, and there has there have been some Andrekian games, yeah, where he caught his opponents into this unusual attack in the French. Yeah, sometimes it happens. Bishop b five. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, and that is uh, the development in Wesley's game. He follows your suggestion. Yeah, he opted for h takes g four, rook takes f four, and occupying the d file. Immediately, Black has this big problem that the bishop can't develop. Rook d eight is a very big checkmate so the first reaction is yeah that rook d4 is the line we discussed and it looked maybe solid enough but solid for white as well otherwise bishop a5 remains but it's uh, not not a happy choice as well it doesn't help you with the development of the bishop of c8 yeah from c8. yeah I, I can never play b6 after that yeah <clears throat> I mean, just imagine that black plays bishop a5, stopping rook d8 checkmate, and then white plays something, and then you want to develop the bishop, you play b6, and you get checkmated again. Yeah, uh, should not happen. By the way, Liam did go for bishop b5. It's on the board. Duda played king a1. And okay, I'm not, not a believer here. Takes, takes knight c4. Black's attack should be very strong and... White is on the defensive. Queen a6, right? Uh... Yeah, the only reason why I wasn't 100% sure if I want queen a6 or queen b5, because maybe I wanted some rook c6, rook a6 business. But of course, queen a6 was so natural and so tempting. OK, I shouldn't get greedy. Yeah, yeah of course. One good move is enough. h4 played. But I mean, okay, I wanted really to develop an attack and my queen on a6 is slightly premature for that. But you can just play knight e4, yeah? Centralize that horsey. Yeah, but do I want this? I mean, where do where does this knight go? Well, it is already where it wants to be. Right? Okay, let's continue the battle. All right, okay, knight principle, h5. Um, I mean, I will just ignore this knight on e4. Okay, rook c6. It's becoming a French again. Yeah, rook c6. Okay, h6. This is your pawn. g6. It's your spirit. Mm -hmm. g6, knight g1. Ah, by the way, we are being told that Arjun is countering uh, Shakriya's attack. So we have to jump right in there. What? What happened here? So rook f3 was the key move. Rustam called it. And you told me not to worry for Arjun. Bishop g7, rook g3. Queen h7, rook f1. Shakriya needs to win, so he goes in with rook e2. Queen a5. Rook takes c2, and... And what? Bishop, Bishop e5. 
Bishop e5, yeah. Yeah, bishop e5 is possible. I mean, this queen a5, Arjun, and he's blitzing things out. Yeah, he still has nine and a half minutes. What is bishop e5? It might be a winning move. Yes. A pretty winning move. Overloaded pieces. Bishop is pinned, and rook takes e5, runs into queen d8. What a sneaky queen a5, queen d8. <laughs> nah, bishop oh, e5 oh. Is, is game over, yeah. Yeah, hmm. I yes. mean this is this is straightforward, very much Arjun style. I think he simply knows that if if this is true, then he just wins the match. So it's absolutely logical that he takes his time. Nah, he will he will win this. And wow, that that this will game. be huge for him. Yeah, that suddenly mm -hmm. beating Mamad of three one. I mean, this is sensational stuff. Ah, this is this is a very good way to to, to score some points. Yeah. No, Queen takes a seven. What? How could he miss it? How could he miss it? Did we miss something? Because I thought like bishop e5, if b6, then you have queen takes a7. Yeah, also. No, I think bishop e5 is game over. He yeah, just I mean, just, just to show this beautiful checkmate, which was also possible again. I uh, know it's not checkmate. Well, no, I mean, you have to go queen b8. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. No, I just wanted to show this beautiful checkmate, but it's not checkmate. So, yes, of course, after rook e5. White goes queen b8 and, and it's a checkmate after all. Yeah, but queen takes a7. Wow, what are we witnessing here? Nerves? I think queen a7 is also probably completely winning for white. Probably, but... Sometimes it happens, yeah. Maybe he sees that queen a7 is enough and then he doesn't kind of bother, yeah. But it's not, but it's not good, yeah? I mean, you have to see a forced tactical win. Yeah, I mean, he had 10 minutes, yeah? There was just no reason for... Okay, luckily for him, probably the position is so winning that he can afford it. But okay, Shakriar is a is a tricky tricky customer. Yeah, if he gets a chance, if he gets a chance to put the bishop on d4 with a check, then it might be a game. Yeah, no, Shakriar is tricky. Yes, um... very tricky. Yeah. So very resourceful. Yeah, if you, you have the chance to finish him off by force measures, you have to go for it. Wow. Okay, now he has to to win again. Or, okay, he didn't think that he was winning before, so probably he is very happy that he has a winning position. Arjun, you, you know Arjun, because whenever we looked with, with Tanya and with, with anyone else, uh, with Lorenz also, we were kind of uh, wondering that is he really as calm as he looks in the pre because he almost looks bored, yeah, and he's playing all these crazy games. Ah, he's pretty calm, yes. Pretty calm, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's pretty calm. Yeah, this actually is, is very nice, very important if... If I would have been calm in some crazy situations, I, I can appreciate very much this characteristic. Queen d7, yeah, is probably still very strong. And then bishop d4 check. King h2. Rook c2 to e2. Oh, that's right, yeah, rook c2 and... Uh... I mean, at least I'm alive. Yeah, it's not over yet. Bishop g5. Yeah, probably it will be over soon. But I don't want to get into details because, yeah, King h2 played first. Anyway, Shakriya goes Bishop d4. We might be having a transposition with Queen d7. But maybe also Arjun plays some other move. Queen b5 also looks tempting. Yeah, Queen b5. But then Queen b5, Rook g8, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, queen b5 with a double attack on the rook and on the pawn. But yeah, black has this very strong rook. So basically, I'm not sure if we ever want to trade queens. A queen c6 played. Computer agrees. Uh, because for your bishop g5, bishop f6 plan also, it's very useful to have the queen on the six. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah. Yeah, there won't be any... Any Shakriya show here. 
I mean, uh, we also should mention because we mentioned already that uh, Arjun is playing from 1.30 a.m. Uh, Indian time and uh, Shakriya is also playing from Baku quite late. Not as late as uh, Arjun, but it's just like one and a half hours difference, I think. Mm -hmm. So basically, the two players who are playing in the middle of the night, um, they are clearly handicapped uh, compared to other players. For example, Duda did mention that he adjusted himself to the American time zone. So he lives according to... Mm, to, to San Francisco. I'm not sure if exactly San Francisco, but according to US time. But yeah, rookie to bishop e5 check. So finally, this beautiful bishop e5 check oh, wow. appears. Wow, nice. sensational. Arjun wins. So that's why queen c6. Yeah, the difference now, bishop e5 runs into queen takes e8 checkmate. And if any of the rooks captures the bishop, then queen f6 check because the diagonal is blocked. Wow. Big congratulations to Arjun. What a comeback after losing those first three matches. Rustam, tell us something. Show some emotions. We want yeah, to hear from you. Like, I, I called Arjun winning today. He won. Yes, exactly. I said Wesley would win. Yes. He's winning. I said Magnus would win. He won. And I said Liam would win. Yeah, my, my bets today are, are good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. But uh, I would even not say that this is any exception. It it feels to me like whatever you say, it's, uh, it has a purpose. It has a meaning. Yeah. Also, you are calling out incredible moves. And uh, also with predictions, I think I won't be asking your predictions anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm heavily losing this battle. Yeah. <laughs> but, but really very, very nice call. But... I don't think that Liam's match is over yet. I no, think I think I think Liam's is the only one which could be troubling, and because it seems to me that Wesley so is completely winning, and he only needs a draw. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, Wesley is in a complete dominating position. Powerful knight against this bad bishop on b6. King can block the d pawn mm -hmm. very nicely, and he does not even need to win. Yeah. No, this is uh, this is a beautiful situation to be in. Yeah, Tadeas is uh, informing us, yeah, 5 a.m. for Arjun, 3.30 a.m. for Shakriya. Yeah, it's it's super tough. And it gets tougher day after day, especially, I think, however, for Mamed Yadov, because he's not the oldest, I mean, not the youngest anymore. I believe that Arjun can uh, adjust to any kind of situation. Yeah, the young body, um, he, he just needs to get used to. F6, yeah, Prague is fighting but the position is bad okay Le let's go back to Duda yeah I think I have never in my life played a tournament game after midnight tournament game after midnight yeah probably me neither however you know whenever I played in China any daytime felt like uh, you know it's it's middle of the night no, I know sometimes it feels like uh, like that, yeah, but I don't think that it ever happened to me. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, but I mean, for example, this 9 a.m. start in some Chinese tournaments, like in Danjo, I believe, last round. The, by the way, that's when I used this bomb in the Ragozin against Dingli Ren, mm -hmm. this new setup with Bishop F5, because I felt like, you know, whether I use a bomb or I just going to lose like the, the biggest idiot, yeah, and I, I played this Bishop F5 system. And uh, luckily, I had no trouble uh, during the whole game. Well, uh, in those days when you still were not playing Bundesliga, we used to play at 9, 9 a.m. on Sundays. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, for me, this uh, 10 o'clock start and then even people are... Uh, sometimes checking out of their hotel room before the I mean, no, no, this I, I just I feel like I lost the game already right there. Yeah, it's uh, I just cannot check out psychologically. If I check out before my game, my tournament finished, I mm -hmm. feel like I can't continue because it's just uh, it's not the right way. Yeah, I think it's absolutely correct. Uh, because I stopped doing this, I stopped checking out on Sunday. I, I, I'm, I'm staying nowadays. So that I can go to the game in a calm state, yeah, and not with a suitcase. And just exactly, yeah. I, I think that this psychologically makes it impossible to even focus on the game. Yeah, it's uh, 
That's correct, yes. Yeah, I mean, I and then people are coming with their luggage, you know, and then you are trying to to <laughs> to leave some, I mean, find the place where to store your luggage, your laptop is there. I mean, it's it's horrible feeling, everything. Yeah, F6, okay, but uh, isn't it getting messy? F6 is a strange move to play. As I mean, in... Under maybe it's a very strong move, however. EF, he wants to go E5 or what? Yeah, well, and if you retreat Knight FC, then he blocks with F5, yeah? No, but EF, E5, I would I would still analyze. No, but EF, GF, no? But if GF, I know if like, I have moves... Uh, then yeah. Queen G4. Well, sort of, yeah? Queen G4, maybe you can take my horse here and then go King F7. Yes, I will. I have to. And now you run, yeah? Probably I run, but okay, I mean, it's... Uh... I agree with you that it's uh, kind of very messy. Also, I don't know if like knight f3 now. If it's but then black it. plays f5, yeah? Is f5 like the end of the world? Well, I mean, I somehow logged down the queen side. I mean, the well, king h6, side. h6, g6, knight g5. Um, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's true. Yeah, because now the e6 pawn is... Okay, everything depends if... You can break, but it feels like you won't have attack, yeah? Well, I just want to, to, to win slowly, is why it... Yeah, yeah, no, of course, it's, it's, a, it's a fight. Clearly, I feel that this is the this is the intrigue, because poor Prague, I mean, just to, to bring up this position, I mean, there are no chances, probably even to survive, but not even to mention that he needs to win. Yeah, Wesley is... Bouncing yeah. back yeah, after, after losing the first two matches. Also, he was very unfortunate. Yeah, and EFGF, Queen G4 on the board. Duda goes for it. I wanted to say that he was unfortunate that he started out against Magnus immediately. Yeah, so he lost that incredible tense fight. And uh, then he got a bit shaky. But now he he's already back to his usual very, very powerful situation. Rook B1, yeah, he just wants to attack here. I thought maybe Holy. he wants to pick up the pawn on H7, but of course he wants to attack. He wants to attack, yeah, it's Duda. Yeah, the... Oh, he's threatening Queen F6. Husarius, Queen F6, check is coming. And if King E, I thought Queen H6, yeah, so actually very, very seriously unbalanced position. But hang on, Queen H6, E5. Well, I didn't see that. Queen h6 made, but e5, well, you, you can take bishop e5, queen h6, bishop f4 check, but it's still a piece. Uh, I mean, I didn't see it, he didn't see it, yeah, and I think that's, that's pretty much the end of it. Yeah, and, and Liam won't miss this chance, and Liam also so clever and so professional. Yeah, e5 played, queen takes h7, I think Duda did not miss it, probably he didn't have anything else. But look, c7, yeah, the, the queen is having some trouble and if you have to go back to this you well, the night before with tempo oh my god yeah yeah night before with tempo also black can just block the e5 with rook e7 as well then white's bishop will be yeah destroyed basically because there is nowhere to go from d4 for this bishop yeah rook c7 queen d3 Uh, rook e7, maybe white has to start doing some crazy things. Yeah, knight b4. Yeah, I like knight b4, yeah? No, no, yeah, no. of course. I mean, if you can, if you can get, look look at these guys. Yeah. And, and also supported by all the pawns. The queen is also very well placed. This rook can get to e7 covering the king. Yeah, rook black f8 has a... is active. Black has a very strong position, yeah, very, very strong position. And has an extra piece. That too, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so wow, I mean, it will be a very critical day today, yeah, because uh, we might have Magnus leading with 12 points, and if Duda loses, or if he does not win this game, and it's very unlikely, then he stays with nine points. Mm -hmm. Liam makes a big step, giant step from four points uh, up to seven. We will be clearly third. Anish has lost with, with four points. Uh, he remains with four. 
Actually, Wesley is jumping to, yeah, Wesley's game has finished. Wesley seals the match, and it means that it actually means that he will jump to six points as well. So he yeah, will yeah. be a fourth. Yeah, he, he will be all the way up, and Arjun and uh, Shahriar will be sharing last place. Yeah. Yes. But Arjun, so Arjun is, uh, yeah, he's up there now. Yeah, up there collecting the seven and a half thousand dollars, yeah. which I think should please your heart. Yeah, that you are also cashing in, you are getting the momentum and getting ready for for the fights. Yeah. Also, I mean, I know, I know. I mean, a nice amount of money to collect in a day. Yeah, exactly. I mean, nice dollars. amount of money. Usually, even if in a tournament you win like this, you are very mm -hmm. happy. But this is only the beginning. He still has three more matches, and I very much feel that he needs this momentum and if he starts winning like he did today then then it's just the beginning yeah duda with 50 seconds against two two minutes i mean liam is always controlling the clock so well so effective now he's he's pulled with a choice maybe even just retreat the knight yeah because this bishop has nowhere to go yeah, 96 simply, yes. I mean, also ED is tempting. Yeah, black goes for ED, but even maybe 96 was simpler, but okay. This is very... But simple. in a way, I, I somehow admire Duda's ability to, to continue fighting, finding problems for the opponent. In general, I think he's uh, he's probably one of the most resilient players out there. Yeah, super resilient. Yeah, and also he's driving his opponents crazy that He's resilient with few seconds on his clock, mm -hmm. yeah? I mean, usually people collapse with few seconds, but for him, the game is only beginning. Yeah. Okay, he, in this game, it might not help anymore, but in general, he's um, just prodigiously resilient. I think him and Ali Reza, yeah, very similar in this respect. Yeah, Ali Reza also, this, this uh, master of few seconds, yeah? All the craziness, all the pieces are hanging and he still has the overview. All right, but now where is this king actually running? Do you go d3 then? Why he, he, just, he, just, he just goes d3. Yeah? yeah, and then queen b3. Does this give us some little hope? And then maybe just d2. Over d2, d2. Queen d2. takes b5 check. And then queen d5 check. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe it will not help me at all. It will not help you. Yeah? King f7. Yes, queen d5 check, king g7, mm -hmm. and then. And then that's it. Yeah, because checkmate is threatened, the, the spawn on the second rank is disturbing. Yeah, okay, this is in the spirit, but yeah, Liam needs to calculate very precisely because it's not so easy to psychologically to give up. Yeah, this he played. This the queen b3, of course. D3, queen b3. Yeah, look, yeah, he one. took, yeah? Yeah, he took two, king f7. He can't even go king g7 now, yeah, to avoid any checks. Exactly, yeah, that's the... And it's also so pleasing to get that king back to h8. Yeah. Perfect harmony. King g7. Yeah, very impressive performance today by uh, by Liam. And um, yeah, in general, a lot of impressive results today also, right? Uh, yeah, ev every time. I mean, this major with this match system. Yeah, I think it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. A6. Magnus, of course, stealing the show. Yeah, with, with all this uh, very bossy result. Yeah, it's 3-0 yesterday, 3-0 today. Yeah, Magnus is just absolutely dominant. But in a way, I feel that this is also what, what the crowd wants to see. They don't mind dominant Magnus at all. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That, that's, that's for sure. I mean, 
when Magnus plays already in the Julius Bear Generation Cup, also we have seen a very focused, determined Magnus, yeah, that who was not fooling around, just crushed everyone, it was one of the biggest, most powerful performances uh, of him, but uh, now winning all four matches and in the way he did, that's uh, of course very impressive. Queen C2, okay, this is uh, clearly threatening Queen takes B1 and look F1 checkmate. We see that the evaluation bar jumped like it's equal, but first of all, draw is enough for Liam to seal the match. Do that down to two seconds, Aisley played. Mm -hmm. Knight D2, yeah, he just wants to, to make a draw. Knight D2, Knight B3, and Knight C1. Yeah, professional. But okay, he's, he has one minute, so there is no reason for him to panic, yeah. It was knight d2, but hang on after knight c1, we will be able to sacrifice on c1. No, we can't. Yeah, queen d7 check, but it Rook doesn't f's. give anything. King h8, yeah, just rook h1, knight b3 check. Yeah, knight c1. Yeah, yeah knight c1. Can, take, c1 can take queen, queen d5. Yeah. Queen takes d5, yeah. Ah, queen d5. And, uh... So the question, do you go queen c4 if you want to force a perpetual? Then, But queen c4 does not threaten perpetual. h6. Knight d2 check. King a1. Knight b3 check. King c b1. Knight, knight, knight d2 check. Yes. Uh, you're yes. right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if we only... But okay, it feels like it should be a win, but... Yeah, knight c1 check played by Liam. So we will be seeing rook c1, queen c1, queen takes d5. But then already there is no checkmate idea on g7, yeah? So black can probably even push. Yeah, well, d2, h6, but okay, king h7 just... Yeah, but somehow d2 blocks our queen, yeah? So I'm not that happy with d2, but d2 played. Okay, well, that's perpetual check, yeah? But it's just not enough. <laughs> yeah, but potential mating threats, but yeah, h6, king h7 is very nice attacking mm -hmm. the pawn on h6. Yeah, very, very close, but no, yeah? I mean, what a fight Duda is pulling off, yeah, from this uh, losing position. Of course, it was connected that Liam uh, did not need to win this game, but still very impressive. Yeah, now he can't threaten mate with h6, but now Black gets to give a queen c4 check, yeah? Was... Exactly, yeah. This is a... This, this square is vital. Queen e6 check. And what a power performance by Liam after getting uh, smashed yesterday by Prox 3-0. Bouncing back with a stellar performance. We haven't been hearing interviews today, yeah? Where, where, where are the guys hiding? Uh, I mean, you can ask me a few questions. I'm here. Yes, yes, that's that's true. Uh, H6, so do that, does try something. Ah, okay, so I'm getting them. Yeah, there were plenty of interviews, but we had all these dramatic moments and, and we missed out on them. So on, on the other channel, you can find all the interviews. H6, Queen C7. Yeah, going for queen f7, and that's it. I think Duda also knows that he did try everything, but it, it was not enough. Yeah, can't fight the moonlight. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Duda also sitting on his chair. He knows that that's it. I mean, yesterday we have seen him smiling, yeah, and he knew that uh, he is calculating this beautiful mate, and now he also knows that that's it. 
queen d6. The queen covers everything. There are no checks against black's king. And if white has to go passive, then that's it. It's finished. No more defense. Yeah, queen d1. Black just gives queen d5 check, then goes queen d3. And okay. But he, black can do whatever he wants. Queen e6 check. Yeah, he wants to go to e1. Yeah, this is. Queen e6 check b3. He's still somehow making moves here. Exactly. I mean, look at this. You can fall for queen e1, <laughs> queen c2, d1, check queen b2, and mm -hmm. it's checkmate, yeah? But yeah, Liam eliminated this h6 pawn, so no more tricks. There, there was also some queen a1 check somewhere. But now Duda is pushing the a pawn. Queen d6, yeah, this is a stabilizer. Just don't let white's queen get out. Yeah, he's pushing, but not enough, yeah? Yeah. But he forced Liam down to 18 seconds. I, I feel like this is already... An incredible achievement from that position. Yeah, A4. The game is still on. And hope dies last. Yeah. Queen D5. Yeah. Now switches that Liam knows that now that he eliminated the H6 pawn, he only has to watch out for the A7 pawn. I mean, not to mention the draw is enough. Yeah, I guess this is really he got this one. Yeah. Yeah. Do that down to four seconds, three seconds. G4, yeah, opening up the, yeah, exactly. That's what I wanted to highlight that without the queen on D5, there would have been some queen H1, A8, queen, whatever idea. But now the last soldier is going G5, but look, is just eliminating now all the pawns and white's queen is stuck. Yeah, now this. This is our last match, yeah, for today. Yeah, there are no comebacks, yeah, so no, no blitz playoffs. Yeah, no, I mean, we had three people who had to win on demand. Yes. And nobody succeeded. In fact, um, in a way, nobody came close, right? Yeah, Duda was the only one who had the white pieces and he went all in right from the beginning. Yeah, he was very aggressive, which slightly backfired, yeah, because mm -hmm. Liam was very well prepared and, and, and Duda never really... I mean, a part of some speculative sacrifice, there was not much he could do. And the king runs away. Yeah, I, I think now we will be hearing uh, Liam's interview after this, this match. Not... Yeah, the king continues to run. I mean, this is already very pleasant. We also see Liam is back to 1 minute 35 seconds. I mean, everything is automatic. Queen c5 probably puts the end to the game. Queen f6, queen d1 to d6. It's a mental with the two queens. Make good use of the queens. Yeah, he's a couple of pieces up, yeah? And it's that big pieces. It's a... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, even without one of the queens should be, should be a win. Yeah, but with <laughs> two of them. Yeah, that's it. Do the designs. What a power performance by Liam. Yes, 3 1 victory against Duda. Very impressive stuff. And we, and we see the, the, the scorecard. Magnus Carlsen has beaten Anish Giri 3 0. Incredible power performance. Wesley So has beaten Pragnanda by winning the third game with the black pieces after Prague over pushed 2.5 to 1.5. Liam Le beat Jan Shishtov Duda 3-1. Very impressive stuff. And uh, Arjun Erigaishi bounced back after losing three matches to beat Shakti Amamadyarov, who is now the one who lost three matches in a row. And here are the standings. Magnus Carlsen leading with 12 points. Jan Shishtov Duda, despite losing, still remains in the second place with nine points. Liam Le, after this big win, jumps to the third position with seven points. Wesley So making an incredible comeback after losing the first two matches now, winning, having been uh, having won two matches, is up there already with six points. 
Uh, Anish and Prague remain with four four points, and after Arjun beat Mamedyadov, he shares with three points the seventh eighth place. So all to all to look forward to. Yeah, Magnus is leading, but everything is very close. What is your take? How do you feel about all the developments, Dustan? Well, I have a feeling that that Magnus will probably run away with this tournament. Um, I think he's just he has such a smooth run that um, I don't see him coming under pressure in this tournament anymore. And uh, as for like second place, I think it will be very close, yeah, between between Dudley and Wesley. It will get very very close. Yeah, Wesley is now very much in the race. Mm -hmm. Also, Liam should never be ruled out. Yeah, we have seen today that uh, what he's capable of. Very controlled performance from, from the get-go. And, uh, well, Prague is super dangerous. We have seen uh, Arjun today uh, winning. I think everybody is relieved that uh, we, we don't have anyone with zero points. Yeah, because it keeps on uh, putting the pressure on the, on the player. Yeah, and now I think Arjun can relax. And if he plays as he did today, then uh, we, we can expect quite some developments there. Yeah, also with this system, when you get three points for winning the match, you can get up there very quickly. Yeah? A couple of more wins and suddenly you are fighting for some second place or something. Yeah, so it could happen also. Yeah. yeah. For example, we will still have Duda versus Wesley So, and we have, we have an interview. So far in the tournament, how are you able to beat him? Yeah, definitely. This is a, a big win because he has been doing so well in this tournament. The previous matches, he won very convincingly. So I told myself that um, I should just try to enjoy the game and try to play my best. And in the past few tournaments in the tour, I did quite well against him, so I wasn't too concerned. But the first game did not go as expected. I, I was losing at some point, and... Um, I thought definitely uh, it, it wasn't a good sign. But then the second game went quite well for me. I was a bit upset that I did not manage to win that game. I got very good chances at some point. But then game three and game four, I think I played much better. Um, this game four, maybe at the end, my technique wasn't so great. Um, I was very nervous, trying not to, not to lose. And also at the end, somehow, the internet was um, not working so well for me. I had some issues, some lacking issues, and my Zoom got disconnected. So I was a little bit distracted, but uh, luckily I did not blunder. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear technical issues are the worst. And Liam, you are now five points behind Magnus Carlsen with three days to go in the finals. You play Magnus tomorrow. We remember you beat him in the match in the Oslo Esports Cup, which was also a major. So how important will that match tomorrow be? How inspired will you be feeling heading into that? Yeah, that was the only time I beat him. Um, and then in Miami, he beat me. So um, I cannot say that um, I, would, I would do well against him, but I will try my best. And he's obviously in top form as well, so it's going to be very hard. But um, I'm going to try to put up a good resistance. Yeah. And of course, Magnus is one of the players sitting in San Francisco. You are one of the players sitting at home. Who do you think has the biggest advantage? Is it best to sit at home or uh, in a venue? I think both works for me, um, especially with this time zone. I'm in America too, so there is not a lot of differences. Um, I'm two hours ahead of um, San Francisco. So I started at 2 p.m. my time, which is not so bad. And I finished around, right now it's 6 p.m., so still plenty of time. Um, sitting at home is definitely more comfortable, but um, I like going to tournaments as well. Yeah. Oh, well, Liam, tomorrow's going to be so, so excited. We wish you best of luck in that big match coming up. Thank you very much. And congratulations on a big day today. Yes, it was actually a very interesting question, yeah, that, uh, for example, if you would have the choice to play from home, yeah, at the comfort of home, or to travel to tournament, what would be your pick, Rostam? Well, I think it really depends where. Uh, I think the location does matter. I mean, if you tell me um, 
today, you know, I mean, there is a nice tournament in Budapest. I would go. But if you tell me, you know, there is a, this tournament in Guangzhou, I will probably say, you know, I'll play from home. Uh, it really depends on the amount of traveling or where you get and whether you have some people there who you look forward to seeing. So it all depends, I think. Yeah, I think Liam also had a very nice point. Yeah, that uh, by being two hours ahead, he starts at two. And we spoke about this, that, yeah, this 12 o'clock start is very tricky because uh, what do you do? Do you have a big breakfast and then there is a risk of uh, playing four games uh, and eventually you get hungry at some point? Or uh, you try to have some lunch, which would be very early lunch and it might be also very strange. Yeah, it's uh, this, this 12 o'clock start. I mean, we are... I mean, we have audience and for us also it's tough to start at nine, but I understand that unfortunately in San Francisco, they couldn't start from two o'clock or mm -hmm. from three, which would be much more comfortable for the players because then it would be just impossible for us to cover it. I think two, two is ideal. So in a way, time zone works best for him. Yes, exactly. And what is your take on uh, Liam versus Magnus tomorrow? Well, I mean, as I said, yeah, I, mean, I, I can just repeat myself. Of course, Liam is very, very strong, but the, the form that Magnus seems to be in and the ease with which he's playing, he's under zero pressure. Uh, I, I, I don't see currently a force in the world that can that can fight this. Yeah, I understand you. And we also have other matchups. Duda takes on Prague, Arjun Erigaishi takes on Anish Giri, and Wesley So takes on Shakri Amamedyalov. So a lot of action ahead. Well, today, for me personally, the most dramatic moment was, of course, Anish taking D C5, which is just impossible. I mean, uh, I don't know. I have to check his interview if, if it's up for how he explains this, because it's, it's just probably he, he doesn't know himself. Uh, I, I think he's in total state of shock probably by why this is, happened. Yes. Wow. So what's going on? I mean, basically, I think that's it. Ah, we are getting the message from Tadeusz that, yeah, he did skip the interview today, which is perfectly understandable. And, uh, well, I hope for him that he recovers because I like his chess so much. Uh, we were so happy for him the first day when, first two days, he played a very nice control chess, that endgame masterpiece against uh, Liam in the Blitz playoff. That's the Anish we want to see. So, Anish, all the best. I did say a couple of things that I might already regret, like I don't know how to talk to you in the future, but I think we will settle it. I, I wish wish is best of luck for the rest of the tournament and uh, well, for everyone, but uh, I think Anish was uh, the, the most, uh, I mean, the player who suffered the most today. Rustam, any last thoughts you want to share with us? Yeah, I'm basically really looking uh, forward uh, for tomorrow. I'm actually having a lot of fun doing this commentary and I think we'll have a wonderful couple of days to finish this tournament off. Yeah, for, for me also personally, it's an incredible big pleasure to, to discuss positions with you, talk talk all, through all the action. <clears throat> you are very sharp, yeah, that, that's, that's true. I mean... I want to see you play also more. Yeah, you you don't play at all, only Bundesliga. Well, I, I, I play this Bundesliga, but in fact, I uh, I have been training consistently so that at least in those games that I play, that I do not look like uh, like an old man that I am. You know, exactly. That's <laughs> the point. You know, I don't know how to play anymore. Yeah, it's I'm also worried that uh, okay if if i'm not in shape yeah I'm, I'm just commenting which is a completely different story i don't mm -hmm. have to make decisions i don't have to press the clock the clock is not ticking my wife knows exactly that usually when i go to some tournament after a long break and i haven't played for two and a half years what happens is that after move 15 i only have five minutes left on on my clock and my heart is like this you know and i'm living from the increment and i think like why did I do this to myself? I also know that my wife at home worries like, like crazy. That again, the famous time trouble for no need whatsoever. Yeah, it's it's super tough. But I'm very happy to see that you are managing well. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you'll do well too. Yeah, Bundesliga is waiting for you. <laughs> With 10 o'clock, yeah? Sunday, yes. 10 o'clock in the morning. I mean, I won't be able to fall asleep till then. Yeah, and I have to play, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, so th that's that's our spirit. That's it for, for from us today. 
And uh, we are waiting all of you back tomorrow, same time, same place. Stay with us. Good night, good morning, wherever you are. Enjoy the day or have a good sleep. Bye See bye. you tomorrow, guys. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Pragyananda. Do you want to use my games to improve your chess? Now you can do. We have unpicked 50 puzzles from my games played in Champions Chess 2 this season. I went bishop c5, d4 and queen e4. Yeah, another crucial win for the qualifications to the topic. You can download it for free just by going to chess24.com slash puzzle pack. Enjoy solving.